hey, it's just me sitting in the dark because our lights aren't really great, but um, Alan went to get a hat because he's not happy with the way his hair looks. So while we're waiting for that, I didn't want to make y'all wait because we're a couple minutes late getting started for our um, Facebook Live. But thanks, everybody. I know it's Monday Night Football and it's not our usual night, but nothing about the podcast is normal right now with the holidays. And um, so we're having to try to squeeze in podcasts when we can. I'm leaving for the kids' kids' trip on Thursday. And um, we have to have everything turned in early. So anyway, that's what we're doing it tonight. So thanks everybody that did show up already. Thank you so much. Hi, Michael. I could always count on you and Kathy Bro Smith. Thank you. And Kelly, hi. Abby. Already at 2,000. That's good. That's great. Hi, Ann. Tiffany. So anyway, oh, I forgot to put Do Not Disturb on my phone. I hope that doesn't be a problem. I forgot to hit Do Not Disturb on my phone. Is that going to be a problem? Probably. Okay. Stacy and Kathy and Rebecca, we've got a couple, uh, two and a half. Hey, Tommy Jean. Hey, friend, Paul. <clears throat> so we got um, 2.6 thousand already. That's good. Oh, wow. And for, good for Monday Night Football. Nobody apparently cares about uh, the Carolina-Miami game. I think Dancing with the Stars is on, too. Yeah, Dancing with the Stars. So thanks for this joining us. This is better than all that. This is better than Dancing with the Stars. Alan this and I is... were... Better than Monday Night Football. Yeah, Alan and I were just saying we need to probably invest in better lighting, a window treatment. <laughs> <laughs> a sign you can see? Well, the sign. I mean, I love that sign, but it's really not effective as far as a stage prop goes. Hey, this is a grassroots grassroots effort. Yeah. This is We're on a shoestring budget. We have 3,000 people watching. And we need to give them a This is better. good. This is good. This is really good. My friend uh, Paul from uh, North Carolina is on. Oh, good. Tall My friend Paul. Tommy Jean from South Carolina is on. Tall Paul. Oh, this is so good. My eyes are weak, so I can't see unless I get kind of close. Yeah, one night, three, four thousand viewers. That's crazy because normally we were doing this on Wednesday nights, but like I was telling them, we've had to kind of jumble things around because our schedule just hasn't really worked for us to do Facebook lives um, at a normal time. So we're just going to... And you have a busy week this week. Very busy. And also we're thinking about, because, you know, obviously this, we're doing this on my Facebook page, but you know, this is the Sandwich and Some Lovin' face, uh, podcast. So we're probably going to start doing uh, Facebook live from a Sandwich and Some Lovin's Facebook page. Yeah. It's not right now because we haven't warned you and we want people to actually watch. <laughs> Yeah, and we want you to go there and follow that page, too. That'd be nice if you could do that, because I think eventually we're going to start um, doing the Facebook Lives from there. I wish I could figure out how to do Instagram Live. You know how to do Instagram Live. Well, but then it goes away. I don't, my, oh, I don't, have, you don't, I don't know, know if it's an it? update or if it's my phone, but I can't save anything on Instagram Live. So I don't know if it's worth doing that or not. Yeah, like Michael James says, maybe this tease about this big announcement has... Uh, has cranked up the viewers. Here. Maybe. We got four and a half thousand viewers. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, we need to get started with the podcast because um, it'll be announced then. We're so excited. It's on our production board so here, excited. right? So excited. We have a production board, also known as my laptop. <laughs> I typed it up tonight. Let's just be honest. Everybody in the house, except for me, was grumpy tonight. It's Everybody. Not it's not true. And they were also grumpy that I finally snapped. And I and then I got grumpy, and they're all like, "What? What? Why are you so grumpy?" You know how it goes, ladies. <clears throat> I I wasn't grumpy when I got home. You were very grumpy. You walked in grumpy. Kelly snapped. She snapped. I snapped after a good hour of having to baby two babies. Yeah. One being my eleven year old, and one being my forty something year old husband. Well, so anyway, we're all good now. Be forty six. We're faking happiness for the podcast. Babe, no, we're I'm not. Kidding. We're fine. We're fine. Just sometimes you're not in a great mood. We have a big announcement. We do. Okay, we're we gonna start. And the Alan is purposely um, doing his microphone cover. Just let's get that out in the open. Doing what? You're doing your microphone cover lopsided on purpose, just to piss Ollie off. Okay, so now you know. So y'all can comment on it a lot if you want, because that's what he wants. Okay. <laughs> oh. 
I just don't know uh, why you keep doing that. Doing what? The whole microphone bit. It's not cute. It, well, it's not meant to be cute. All right, let me see here. Oh, boy. Well, we haven't done this in a couple weeks. <clears throat> Tell me when you need a sound check. Um, I think I hit record first, right? Yeah, it's rolling, so. It's rolling? Test one, two, me, me, me. Go ahead. Hugh G. Rection. Okay. Please pick up the red courtesy phone. Hugh G. Rection. Not a family-friendly podcast, obviously. All right. This is like cable TV. How so? Well, it's not, it's not regulated. The Disney Channel's on cable TV. Yeah, that's a good point. So is Skinamax. Yeah. All right, you ready? Ready. Welcome to another episode of A Sandwich and Some Lovin', a, a very exciting episode for me, Kelly Raspberry Evans, and my husband. Hello, I'm Alan. Alan Evans. It's exciting for me, too. I said it's and. I said it's for me and my husband. Oh, okay. I wasn't listening. Like a, uh, I wasn't listening. Yeah, as usual, because why? <laughs> per usual? Per usual. Because I know, because you cranked up the Facebook Live again this week. I this did. was your idea, too. It was, because it is a big announcement, and we're very excited. And, of oh. course, I run the risk of you doing nothing but reading Facebook messages this is a, while we're doing the podcast. We've got so much going on, podcast listeners. So much. We have a production board in front of us. We've got the Monday night game on to my right. <laughs> I've got a laptop down here in case we need a music bed. We've got the Facebook Live being broadcast right here in front of us. We've got a bottle of champagne. We got a bottle of champagne. We got we got some bubbly. We got barefoot bubbly. Yeah, I didn't break out the Dom. We've got because it's just you and me, and I know yeah. we're not going to finish it. And the Dom Perignon. Oh. Well, this is a very special for us occasion. It's huge. I just didn't, I just didn't think I should break out the Dom because we can't finish it. No, and we I'll, we can do a couple glasses of bubbly and toss the rest. No, we only bubbly. break into the Dom for. Uh, our wedding. Wedding. Um, we'll probably do it on our anniversary. Anniversary. Our boss man, George, who's so sweet, and he may or may not be <clears throat> listening to the podcast. Amen. But he keeps giving us bottles of Dom Perignon uh, for Christmas. Amen. And I just was saving them because I never had a special occasion. And, and then finally I was like, you know, our, our wedding better be special enough. So we opened one for that. And like I said, this would be a special one if it wasn't for the fact that it's, a, you know, middle of the week and... Yeah. I got to get up in the morning. I mean, this stuff. isn't. Is this. Barefoot Bubbly is pretty cheap. Let's oh, just be honest. Oh, it's cheap stuff? But it's not bad. It's but it, it's got words on there I can't pronounce. Most awarded sparkling wine brand. Well, no, I can pronounce that. It says. Oh, which part do you Brut, brut C U V E. Cuvee, I guess. I don't know. Where I come from, it's Cuvee. So are we going to do the announcement now or what? I want to get it out of the way because I don't. I want to drink my champagne because normally I like to do the podcast with a glass of wine or. And we've a been, we've been, we've been anticipating this for a while. We've been, we've been expecting it this. Finally happened today. We've been expecting this, and we finally got the good news. Legi it legitimately happened today. We finally got the good news. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and tell our podcast? Are you going to start opening the bottle of champagne? Okay. A little behind the scenes, Alan doesn't know how to open a bottle of champagne. I, I can, but I'm going to put my microphone okay, down. Okay, put your microphone down while I talk. <laughs> okay, so you okay. go ahead and tell me. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody, we're so excited. We've been doing this podcast since uh, about a few weeks before we got married. We got married July 1st, so it's since June. A baby podcast. We've kind of been, you know, just seeing how it goes. It started off as kind of a little hobby, something fun for me and my husband to do together. In addition to his marketing job, in addition to me doing my real job, the radio, with the Kid Craddock Morning Show. Today, we hit one million listens to a Sandwich and Some Lovin' podcast. Y'all, that is such a huge deal. You don't... I'm scared. Babe, do it away from the face. Oh my God. No, no, cover it. You're going to hit the ceiling and pop a hole in it. You really don't know how to open a bottle of champagne. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Babe, you're going to hit the ceiling. No, it's not. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh my God. It's coming. Here it goes. Oh, my God. Don't break the window. Don't. Don't do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was very scary. Okay. <sighs> That wasn't fake. That was real. I was, I'm like all hot. 
Okay, these are our... That stressed me out. I know, baby. These are the glasses from our engagement. These are our Reunion Tower champagne glasses. Here so we we're going to toast... We're pouring a bottle of bubbly. Thank you to everybody who's listened more than once. We know it's not a million people, but all of, you know, a hundred of you listened... A lot. Uh, 10,000 times. Would that be right? So, cheers to us. Thank you, darling, for doing this with me. And thank you to everybody listening. Cheers to the listeners. You know, it's just a million. It's like... I, I didn't even, I never even thought about that till it happened. That What a big deal that is. So we really appreciate it. One million. Here's to and, one million more. And this isn't just us, you know, like just celebrating that. We want to say thank you in a very special way. Let me take a sip first to make it official. Mm. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Can you top me off? Because that, oh. and here's the thing about champagne. It makes me burp a lot. All right, so what we're going to do, what do you normally celebrate with a glass of champagne? It could be an anniversary. It could be a very special milestone birthday. It could be... Could be New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. All right, I don't know if you were... We weren't doing the podcast last New Year's Eve, but Alan and I were dating at that point, and he had never, we never had New Year's Eve together, and I was hosting a New Year's Eve party. I proceeded to get um, trashed. I would curse, but I'm still trying to keep it family friendly. And I ended up not making it to midnight. And I was the host of New Year's Eve party, which made it even worse. So shockingly enough, they asked me to come back and host again. I was going to say no because I was, first of all, embarrassed about it. But Alan says I owe him a do-over because he didn't get to kiss me. Well, he kissed me. I passed out me at midnight. Gave me a kiss on the cheek. as a happy new year. Should we tell that story? I thought I just did tell it. We'll tell it again. Let me just get to the fun part stuff. Okay. So, stuff first. I'm already, what? One sip and I'm already. Yeah, my you're up. way off. So to celebrate 1 million listens to a Sandwich and Some Lovin' podcast, we are going to give away two tickets to the New Year's Eve party. It's again going to be at the Hilton Granite Park. That's in Plano at 121 in the Tollway. This is a fabulous New Year's Eve party. There is food. It was so fun last year. There is an open bar. That's where I got into trouble. I mean, it raged last it ra year. It raged so hard. I, I don't think I made it to 11. But I'm going to pace myself this year, I promise. So it's food. It's an open bar. The champagne toast at midnight. DJ Mike Morse, who was the, the DJ last DJ New Year's Eve. We loved him so much. We had him DJ our wedding. My man. He's back to DJ the New Year's Eve party. He's going to be, he's so great. You will not want to get off the dance floor. Part-time Justin was there? Let me just say this. Part-time Justin party just as hard as I did, except he ended up face down uh, under a table. table. <laughs> yeah, under a table. Your friend Amy? Amy fell off the stage. Fell off a stage? It, I'm telling y'all, this was a hot mess and you don't want to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ring in 2018. Well, here you're thinking, I'm not, I don't live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's so far for me to get to Plano. Well, here's the thing. You can enter this contest anywhere. You can hear a sandwich and some loving in the United States. Okay, we have to make sure that it's in the un United States of America. We appreciate people listening, but we can't afford airfare for anybody outside of the United States. So if you do require airfare, your tickets on a plane are covered, and we're going to get you a room at the Hilton. So you can celebrate New Year's Eve with us, two tickets to New Year's Eve, like I said, food, open bar, dancing with DJ Mike Morris, room and hotel. But Kelly, Kelly, I have a question. Huh. What? H how do I enter? I, I want to be part of this. How, how do, well, I, already, how do I do this? You're already there, though. I don't understand. No, I represent the podcast listener. Oh, okay. Well, this is what we're going to do. Because we are shamelessly trying to, um, you know, get more people excited about a sandwich with some love, and as excited as we are, and the people who have listed a listened a million times, we're going to do a contest, and it's on Instagram. We do have an Instagram for a sandwich and some love. A sandwich and some love. That's exactly what it is. A sandwich and some love with no G on love. Okay, because we keep it sassy like that. So what you need to do is follow us on Instagram. Step one. At a sandwich and some love. Then step two. What 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 does every man need to be happy? A sandwich and some love, and that's why we call it the podcast. So what we want you to do is post a picture of you and someone you love. It doesn't have to be your husband or boyfriend. It could be no. someone you love. Could be your boyfriend. Could be your girlfriend. Could be your kid. Could what be about? your mother. Enjoying a tasty sandwich. Yes. Right. 
It has to be you and someone you love enjoying a sandwich, and we want you to hashtag it SandwichNYE17. So preferably a selfie in that picture. Right. So sandwich, hashtag SandwichNYE for New Year's Eve. Set. Is this 18, though? This is New Year's Eve 18. 17. No, it's New Year's Eve 18. I guess we're ringing in the new year, but the party will be on the 17. But this is New Year. Oh, God. We need to figure it. Is it 18? Well, now we're just being confusing. Let's just go with 17. That's what we have. Okay. Well, I mean, we, 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 we can change it right now if we're going to change it. We're going to leave it this? Well, that's what we have here on the production I know, but board. we weren't thinking until I was thinking. This is actually New Year's Eve. 18? 2018, right? Okay, maybe it should be 18 then. Change it to 18? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to change that. We're going to hashtag it NYE18, right? Well, at midnight, it's 2018. Okay, yes. so that's what we're going to say. We're going to keep, we're going to do that. So follow us on Instagram at a sandwich and some lovin'. Post a picture of you and someone you love enjoying a tasty sandwich and be creative with it. Hashtag sandwich NYE18. That's what I thought. It's 17. <sighs> Delete seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hashtag. God. What, what, we got to make a decision. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Every, okay. It's 18 or 17. Oh. This is New Year's. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. It doesn't matter because we've never run a contest on New Year's Eve with a sandwich and some leaven. So I think you could do either 17 okay, or we're 18, do 17. but New Year's Eve is 17. in 2017. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Okay. Oh my Follow us on Instagram. Goodness. At a sandwich and some lovin'. Take a picture of you and someone you love enjoying a tasty sandwich. Hashtag it, sandwich NYE 17. Done, finished, let it be written, let it be said. What's, Even though I'm still questioning. What's the time? Because we need white cheddar to go back and clean this No, up. we don't. This is perfectly fine. All right, here's the deal. How are we going to pick a winner? We suggest you be very creative with your picture because we're not picking the winner. Because nope. we don't want anybody mad at us. You can be mad at the kids. Our kids are going to pick the winner because nobody can be mad at a cute five-year-old and a cute nine-year-old and a cute 11-year-old and a cute almost 13-year-old. Okay? Yep. Our kids are going to pick the winner. So you have to get that hashtag in there so they know to find your picture. So before. we're looking for, well, the kids will probably be looking for what? Fun pictures, yeah, fun. unique sandwiches maybe. Right. Creative. Uh, yeah. It's a cool prize. It's a very cool prize. You yeah. were reading off all this stuff earlier and I was thinking, wow, tickets, that is nice. Just tickets alone for a couple to go to the New Year's Eve, which you can, if you want to buy tickets, you can. I have the link up at uh, my Facebook page, Kelly Raspberry. Um, the tickets for couples are uh, two hundred and seventy dollars, plus you know, like some some handling fees. That's, yeah, that's that alone. And then we're throwing in the hotel room, and then we're throwing in airfare if you need it. So it's a really valuable prize. But we wanted to make sure we celebrated with you, and we're so excited. So look forward to celebrating. Hopefully, with a lot of podcast listeners, but one lucky listener listener that gets to go for free. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a really fun party last year. I mean, seriously fun. Um, that, until I passed out. Well, until you passed out. But that Hilton Granite Park yeah. is a um, brand new place, really first class place. The room we had it in is huge, big dance floor. Yeah, it was fun. Lots yeah. of room to party. We have a, a little uh, photo booth, and it's 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 just so much fun. Oh, well, we have the photo booth? There. Oh, yeah. Back. We'll yeah, the simple booth, booth is coming back. That's where I learned how a simple booth worked. Mm -hmm. And you can you can book that through RadioDJs.com, but it's so fun because it's all on social media. Instead of getting those strips you have to keep up with, and nobody you want to share it on social media so everybody can see, so that'll be there too. So anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to announce the winner on our December the 7th December podcast, the 7th because we know people need time to buy their outfits and make arrangements if you need to get a sitter or make you know we need to make the airfare arrangements so you have what three four weeks yeah three four to weeks. get this in okay are these uh, thank you very much everybody are these first class tickets no oh what, really you balling like that I thought crazy? we I thought we balling like no, that we balling like that we balling like that. We've got airfare. Well, our boss, man, George, is paying for that. Hey, I'm not going to ask hey, him to do uh, first class. Hey, yeah. Uh, I heard Alan is uh, wanting to give away first class tickets. Uh, yeah, no. Hey, man. We're not. It's, it's, you, you, hey, you need to rein him in, Kelly. And uh, you know what? If you live locally, hey, you can drive. It's okay. But you get a hotel room, so you don't have to drive home that night. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's fun. I'm so excited. So thank you. I can't wait to see the pictures. And we're sure that the hashtag is hashtag sandwich NYE 17. Yes. Okay. I think that's wrong, but that's what it is. So, and we'll post, um, we'll post it. You know, that's an interesting question now. I, I don't see, know now what's you're right. Confused. See, now, but we've already said it. We're yeah. not changing it. Yeah. The party is on the 17th, but you're ringing in the new year. Right. Right. New Year's but New Year's Eve, Eve is actually the se- 2017. But New Year's, you're celebrating New Year's Eve of the next year, which is the 18th. I don't, you, know right. I, I, don't, I don't know what's right. I don't. I don't know what's right. But you've been to parties where they have the cups and things. They say 2017, the, the and then year. some say the next year. It always says the next year. All the hats oh. say the new year. So I, I think don't you screwed know. up. But you, 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 you made me do seventeen. So it's. Gonna... I made you do seventeen. Yeah. That's what you wrote in the notes. Well, when we were talking about it five minutes before we went live on the podcast, um, that's what we. But then I realized when we were talking that it was wrong. But that's okay. We're going to stick with wrong because we can. And is it a sandwich NYE 2017 no, or sandwich 17. NYE 17? Just 17. NYE 17. That's what you said. Okay. Sandwich NYE 17. Okay. Let's just move on. Okay. We'll remind y'all at the end of the podcast. We'll post it on social media. And we'll post it on social media. So there, there will be less confusion, hopefully. Yeah. And again, December 7th is the, the cutoff. We're going to announce the winner. So you might want to get in a little bit before that because the kids... Um, have to pick the winner. So actually, we should say that the the deadline is a few days before that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Coming up, we're going to tell you all about an item we got to check off the bucket list. That was fun. That we we were dreading. I was we literally were trying to figure it. out ways to get out of it up until the last minute. I, w- I just didn't want to do didn't it. Didn't want to do it. I didn't want But to do now, it. ultimately, very glad we did. We're going to tell you about the 5K. Alan and I ran together. And we're also going to update you on the, whew, the weight loss challenge. But that's coming wow. up after a word. That's coming up after a word from, from our, our sponsor. sponsor. Yes. That's right. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, one of the 1 million listens, thank you very much. You may remember our very first sponsor, we probably talked a little bit too much about it, but it was we were so excited to have one. Wonderbly.com. Yeah, Wonderbly.com creates one-of-a-kind personalized children's books. They use your child's name or birth date and the, bo- and the book. Literally doesn't exist until you press the button. It only takes a few minutes and you're done. Yeah, we ordered the Lost My Name book. That was the first one in the series that Wonderbly did. And we did it for our five-year-old Dylan, and we're going to give it to him for Christmas. We're so excited. And honestly, Alan, were you impressed by the quality of yeah, the book? Yeah, it was it's really not like these nice. kiosk books you get. This is a good one. Yeah, I'd seen other personalized books, and they don't even come close to what Wonderbly provides. The stories are beautifully written with hand drawn illustrations, and I remember it, it arrived in the mail really quickly, too. Yeah, it was like less than a week, and it was beautifully packaged, too. I just loved it, and I'm, you know, I wanted to test it out before we talked about it. But I loved it so much, I'm going to order more for some kids in our lives for Christmas. So don't don't tell if you know these kids. I won't tell. And they're perfect not only for Christmas. They are also perfect for birthdays, for baby showers. If you already know the baby's name, you can have a book written for the baby before the baby's even here. Yeah. And, you know, I love reading to all my kids when they were just babies. And I'm still reading to the youngest two when I put them to bed every night, the boys. And it's something we all look forward to and getting to read to them a book about that's all about them, it's going to be even more special. Yeah, and Wonderbly.com, Wonderbly.com, they have a whole variety of personalized books. The original Lost My Name book. There's also the My Golden Ticket book. Takes your child on a journey through Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Cool. They also have for the holidays, My Christmas Snowflake, and that one you can personalize with the names of your entire family up to nine names. I got a friend that could use that book. Mm-hmm. If you want to see how all this works, go to wonderbly.com. That's w o n d e r b l y.com and enter your child's name for a full free preview of their story. Mm-hmm. And we know you're going to love the preview so much you're going to want to order it. And if you enter the code Kelly, that's my name, Kelly at checkout, you'll get 15% off your order. That's wonderbly.com and enter the code Kelly at checkout to save 15%. And let us know how much you love your child's book. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you because you're going to love it. Very excited about that. Thank you, Wonderbly.com, for sponsoring A Sandwich and Some Lovin'. All right. So uh, I believe it was, was it last week we went over our, I can't remember. Things run together. But we went over our bucket list that we created 
um, before 2017 started, and one of the things on the list was the 5K. Yep. And why don't you talk about why you wanted to run the 5K? Well, oh gosh, we we put this on the list. It was New Year's Eve of 2016. New Year's Eve, Eve. right? Of 2016. Mm-hmm. And I always wanted to run a 5K just because I had never done it before. But I thought instead of saying, you know, I want to lose some weight in the new year, which never seems to work for me, or saying I want to lose 10 pounds, which never seems to work for me, I thought if I put, I'm going to run a 5K, then through all the training and getting ready for the race, I would lose a little weight. You know, I'd naturally have to exercise. Right. So that was my thought process. That was his thought process. Well... In the spring, Kelly and I both downloaded the uh, Couch to 5K app, Mm -hmm. and we started training, and we started about the same time together. I lasted about, I'd say, a week, and this was back in March of this year. Kelly kept going and training, and then she finally got frustrated, I think, because I wasn't training. It got to the day where I had to run 22 minutes straight, and I, I had run... I think a couple of eight minute segments and I was literally crying while I was running because I hated it so much and he wasn't doing it with me. Yeah. And I, I mailed it in because we couldn't find a 5k that we liked that worked for our schedule. So we didn't letting it leading into summer and it was hot. And so I called him before, I mean, I went out and I started walking my warm up, and it said, okay, I'm about to have to run this 22 minutes. I stopped. I called Al and I was like, are you doing this or not? He said, I'm not gonna do it right now. I said, then I quit. (laughs) Because yeah. I didn't want to keep doing it, and because I, I hated it so much. So we didn't do, we didn't do one in the spring. We didn't do one in the summer because in Texas it's too, it's too hot, hot to run a five k or run outside. So we put it off and put it off and put it off, and then we finally found one we wanted to run called the uh, Trinity River Run in Dallas, near downtown Dallas. It goes across the Margaret Hunt Hill, Margaret Hill Hunt, Hunt Hill something Bridge. Like so anyway, we signed up for this with two good friends of ours, Craig and Susan. And, uh, Craig, and some people signed up with the sandwich and some leaven. And yeah, we Rachel had some listeners and, sign up. Yeah. But Craig is actually a, a, an Ironman uh, participant. He's really in shape. and his, He was showing pity on us. Yeah, he, he was just, he was toying with us. But uh, his wife, Susan, is, is she was a good runner too. But anyway, the four of us ran it. And Kelly actually trained a little bit before the 5K. Um, Not as much as I should have. How many times did you run before the Oh, I don't know how many times. Five but, or six. But I, I was getting, um, I had run two eight-minute increments. I was getting ready to have to run 20 minutes or something and never got around to doing it. And everybody kept saying, you know, when you get out there and run with other people, you're going to be, you know, on adrenaline. You're going to be pumped up and motivated by the crowd around you. You're going to be amazed by what you can do. And at first, my goal was to run it without stopping. And then I realized that probably wasn't going to happen. I was going to have to walk some. Then once I started running, I'm like, I'm gonna really try to run without stopping, and that was that became my goal as we took off. Yeah, and Kelly had she was she was keeping up a good pace. In fact, we you know we started together, right? And we ran about the first I'd say ten minutes or so, kind of next to each other. It was hard at first because there's so many bodies. Yeah, there were a lot of people, started. and then there was a big hill right at the beginning. At the very beginning, right there the was beginning. a hill. I'm like, who put this hill here? It was awful. But Kelly was super consistent, and then about the halfway mark, she was maybe 50 yards in front of me. But I could still see her, but she was out in front of me. I kept slowing down, but it was, was, I don't mean, it it was throwing me off a little bit because I had my breathing and my pace, and I I knew you were behind me a little bit, but not too far, right? I wasn't too far. I mean, I could see you the whole time. Yeah. And then, um, I felt bad leaving you, but I was, I needed to go faster for my, for my breathing. Cause what I found worked for me was to inhale three steps, exhale four, inhale three steps, exhale four. I didn't really think about anything else other than that while I was running. I did notice cause it was a nighttime run when we were running by, they had traffic stopped. I was like, are people honking because they're supporting us or because they're really mad at us? No, they were mad. They They were were, very mad mad at us us. because we were blocking them. We were blocking traffic. There was a lot of us. And I feel bad for people that were caught in that. But, you know, what is your... what is your? There were several hundred runners, bad. right? There were people that were blowing past police officers because they were like, they had enough waiting. Yeah. And they could have killed somebody. It was bad. But anyway, nobody got hurt. And at, towards the end, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it all 5K without stopping. And then there was another damn hill. At the very end. Yeah, there was a hill at the end. At the very end. 
happened? And I thought I could catch Kelly on this hill. She she got up at the top of the hill and then she stopped. My breathing started. I was like, I was starting to really get off that last hill. And I saw this blue street light up ahead at the top of the hill. And I just started telling myself, if I could just get to the top of the hill, I, I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop. So then at that point, my mind was made up. And then I got at the top of the hill, and then I kept going. But then yeah, by the I time, but the, by the time I got up there, she had rested up enough to where she started running again. So now she's probably, I don't know, twenty yards in front of me. Yeah, I finished. I I walked for ninety seconds. I didn't stop. I walked, and when I I was like so mad at myself. I I'm still a little bit mad. But then I started running. So I ran the rest of the way in, and I finished. A little bit ahead of you, and I tried. Oh my God! I hit the record button like three times to get Alan crossing the finish line, and it just wouldn't work. Come to find out, my fingerprints are bad. We'll get to that later. I'm so mad. So anyway, I hit that, and I missed him crossing the finish line, and I'm sorry, honey. No, that's okay. I only do this once a but year. But Alan ran the whole thing without stopping, even though he ran a little bit slower than I did. He didn't stop. I walked a little bit. I was like the tortoise. But you you finished the race. Yeah. Slow and steady finished the race. That was very slow and steady. So we do want to say, this is just for the 5K, because there was also a 10K and a half marathon. But the men's overall 5K winner was Griffin Cooper. Congratulations, Griffin. 18 minutes, 49.6 seconds. That's fast. Just to put it into perspective to what we did. He's running fast. So almost 19 minutes. Now, the age category for Allen, John Daniels won with 23 minutes, 36.3 seconds. Allen came in ninth in his age category. Not bad. Ninth out of 16. Your time, 36 minutes, 10.3 seconds. I'm not going to enter the Olympics anytime soon. That's but but hey, first 5K you ever ran, First right? 5K I ever ran, and I didn't train for it. And you didn't stop, and you did not train for it. So I'll take that. You were 230th overall. <laughs> now, in the women's category, the overall winner, Gavin Stallings, 20 minutes, 18.5 seconds. So congratulations, Gavin. In my age category, I'm burping because I had champagne, Melissa Tremont had 27 minutes, 53.4 seconds. My time was a little slower. It was 35 minutes, 33.2 seconds. I came in 12th out of 36, which is pretty good, right? That's really good. 216th overall. That's great, babe. Yeah, so you were 230th overall and I was 216th I overall. I know, you did great. But we did it. We did it. And you know, we were both saying after we finished, that you know, as much griping, yeah. yeah, as much griping and groaning as we did before the race, y'all. After we finished, we were like, "Hey, that was kind of fun." You know, we were trying. If we were like, "If we can't find a parking spot, we're not doing it. If it's raining, we're not doing it." And we were just every excuse. Oh gosh, in the book. you know and what? Alan had to get up and leave the Cowboys. Well, I had to leave the Cowboys, game. which in retrospect, that was a good yeah. thing because they got Hammered. blown. They got freaking rolled by yeah. the Falcons. But um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, we had fun, and then we went for some. Uh, some food afterwards yeah, with Craig and Susan. Oh, and, I made myself sick. Yeah. Don't do that after a run. I've, I've been, yeah, all day my stomach's been a little off kilter. I'm telling you, when we went to bed last night, every limb on my body, it was almost, a, it was a good feeling. It was an exhausted feeling. Like my arms, my legs, everything was just so heavy. I just wanted to lie down, but then I was so full and sick. But, you know, Pepto Bismol helped. Well, oh, I bit. slept like a rock last night, though. Yeah. I just we felt both so been relaxed. Kind of, we both been kind of dragging a little bit today. So it did take a little bit out of us, but. We're already thinking about maybe doing it again, maybe. I'd do it again. Maybe in the spring, maybe. Yeah, I'd definitely do it again. I think we should find one in the spring to run. Maybe. Let's so that's find good. one in the spring. We'll do that. And maybe we'll be a little bit lighter by then. What about a turkey trot? No. Everybody's told us not to do a turkey trot. People that know these things say don't do the turkey trot because everybody goes to do a turkey trot. And they say there's so many people normally you can't even run. Really? That's what, did you hear Craig talking about that yesterday? Or were you not paying attention? No, I was paying attention. You act like you didn't hear that before. Trying to add to the flavor of the oh, podcast. Oh, so right. oh, so you're being a oh, but yeah, they said there were so many people that you couldn't even you can't even run at a turkey trot. Yeah, because it's like people with strollers and everybody's taking the family out to do something on Thanksgiving, and the people that really want to run can't run. Right. So there's that. So anyway, hopefully, like I said, let's do it again. Let's start training right now. Well, we we should because um, we have a, a weight loss challenge. No, oh, gee. That we need to address. <clears throat> Yeah. Now, whose idea was this? This was your idea. This was my idea. We covered this uh, last week, last uh, edition of the podcast. We were feeling so big and bloated after the um, black tie event we went to. Yeah. Because we were just eating like kings. Yeah, and I 
Or not just that night, but we no, have we been. been. Since the wedding. Since July 1st, oh. we haven't put the fort down. I have literally gained, well, as of last week, I had literally gained 15 pounds. Exactly. From the day we got married, July 1st, to whatever last week, last Sunday was. I don't remember. <laughs> what was last Sunday? November something. Right. August, September, October, November. So in about four months, I'd gained 15 pounds. It was bad. And you had gained a little bit. I've gained like eight. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, I had the bright idea. Let's do a weight. Let's try to do a weight loss challenge. Hold each other accountable. Let's try to lose 20 pounds by the end of the year. We are the worst at holding each other accountable. I'll be sitting there putting something in my mouth and he'll just look at me. And then I'll... Well, I'll try, but I don't want to be... But then you... We, we don't really... I don't want to be that nagging guy. We don't say like, anything. And you, then, you, were, you were popping those hot tamales the other day. After I, okay. we had talked about the weight loss challenge. So she's popping these hot tamales Honey, like they're... Like they're... Candy. It was a just, snack pack. Hot tamales see, have no carbs. And there was like seven of them in the How many pot. calories are in a there hot tamale? There like tamales. seven. Look them up. I don't know. But I was doing an appearance at Target, which I was very excited to be there, and there were little hot tamales there, and I had like seven okay. hot tamales. Well, all right. That that that's uh, you know, hey, I'm We're not gonna. I'm, that. Hey, I'm not gonna <laughs> nag her about it. And if, I'm not gonna nag you. I if someone was on a diet, they probably wouldn't be popping hot tamales. I'm just saying. Okay, well, would you be popping everything you were popping if you were, well, you were on a diet? What was I? What popping? did you do? What was I popping? Well, um, Susan's leftover calamari. Yeah. Which yeah. was fried. I mean, there's things you Emma did. Kelly's leftover... Um, Pasta. P P Piata. What was the name of that place? Piata Street yeah. Tacos. Yeah, so it's not, don't be just looking at me. I I'm like not, seven but you know tamales. what? You know what? Let's report out. Because it's right. week one. So we didn't weigh all week. Alan went out of town on a business trip. I went out of town on a business trip. And I've been not so great with my dieting. And it's shown in the results. Didn't lose a pound. You, Did, you didn't, stayed, didn't gain a pound. You stayed, I stayed flat. flat. I'm at 198.5. What about you, babe? Well, at first, I thought I'd stayed the same. Until Alan reminded me um, that, that I actually was not that <laughs> weight last week. I gained a pound. <laughs> yeah. So no. now the weight loss challenge has gone from let's lose 20 pounds so to let's, let's lose 21. 21 pounds. And we have even less time to do it. Well, it's, yeah, yeah, it's my fault. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's okay, babe. But now I'm getting ready to go on a kid's kid's trip to Disney World. And you know how great it is. Um, the eating there, real, they don't actually have like hummus and carrot sticks on all the What do you think the, there. what do you think the, the, the healthiest know. food choice is at Disney chicken World? Chicken fingers. Are That's they, what I usually eat every kid's kid's trip is chicken fingers. Are they fried? And, I'm, and then I'm kind of, yes. And then I'm going to come back home from kid's kid's and what's happening right after that? Thanksgiving. Can you go in there and say, hey, uh, uh, can hey, I Hey, Mickey. No, no, no. Can I get some grilled uh, chicken strips? I don't instead? think they do a lot of special oh. ordering in the lines. Can you Disney get World. grilled chicken strips and broccoli at I Disney know. World? I might just pack some protein bars. We'll see. Yeah. So I, I failed. So this weight way. loss challenge. And you were sitting there. Here, pour me some more champagne. This <laughs> this weight loss challenge has, ha uh, has This has been going on a week. It's not good. You know what? And then she's got kids, kids. And then we yeah, have Thanksgiving. And then we have Thanksgiving. <laughs> What are we thinking? Where it's going to be a herd of buffalo eating over here. It's bad. I tried on an outfit that I bought. I got this cute outfit from Target. Y'all, you need to go back to Target if you haven't been lately. And that, that whole who, what, where collection. I bought this um, outfit I saw on the mannequin, but it had a huge slit up the front. And I didn't like that, so I took it to a seamstress and had her hem it off. And when I tried it on, before I got it altered, it, it fit really well. And then I tried it on today to see if it was an option to wear at the office Christmas party. Oh, when's the office Christmas party? December 2nd. Where is the office Christmas party? Do we know that I yet? Yeah, I do. I oh, you do? Yeah, I don't think I'm allowed to say. Oh, you're not? We'd love to have everybody show up, but I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say later. Is it like a private but, a private place? It's at a restaurant, but we have like a private area. Restaurant. But anyway, I can't get the, I can barely get the thing zipped. This is a problem. What about your silver dress? You think that one, you could get your silver dress on right now? My silver dress? Yeah, the one you wore at uh, Vegas for your birthday. That wasn't mine. That was Erica's. I borrowed it. Okay. The silver dress. I that sent it back you, to Erica. The one that you know that I'm talking about? Yeah, but I sent it back to Erica. It's oh, fine. okay. Okay. She loaned it to me for my birthday. Okay. So she has it. So we're going to start back with the weight loss challenge, and um, we're going to lose 21 pounds. By I'm still today. doing it. I've just maintained my okay. weight. I've just maintained my weight. Okay. Well, good luck. 
I hope we both do it. I hope you lose enough to make up for me. You're my fearless leader. I'll try to lose 21 pounds. And you're a man. It's going to be easier. But I know I can do it. That's an excuse. I just need to count calories. I'll do it, maybe. All right, so next up, as promised, last week I was telling you about Oprah's favorite things. And Alan's like, what's the big deal? Oprah's favorite things is a big deal. When she used to have her talk show and she'd do this show, you you would... You'd show up in the audience and you didn't know what that episode was. And then when she announced, today's my favorite things, everybody would start weeping and crying and falling out because you knew you were getting everything Oprah gave away. It's a very, very big deal. Is this when she'd just give away stuff to the audience? Yes, yes. And you like, remember that one year when she tried to give away heartfelt gifts and everybody was like all ticked off because we showed up to get like memory-making journals and learning how to make scrapbooks. Everybody was really pissed because they want the refrigerator with the, with the TV in it, you know. Is Oprah still on the air? Well, she has her Oprah network, um, but, and she does, like, Super Soul Sunday, so she's still on the air. But she doesn't do her show like anymore. Bit me. She doesn't do her show anymore? Not the talk show, no. Oh, really? So now, she has the magazine, and every year she still comes out with her list of her favorite things. What about Stedman? Is he around? Yeah, he's still around. Still he together. is? Yeah. So I'm going to give you some of the, a few little, I, I can't obviously go over everything on the uh, My Favorite Things list, but we're going to talk about that next, because I did promise to do that, but first... We need to tell you a little bit, of, you know, about the upcoming Christmas season. You're going to be wanting to mail a lot of stuff, I'm sure. Yeah, but, you know, especially you, babe. Yeah, especially me. I have a lot to mail. Well, these days you can get just about anything online and on demand. You can even get postage on demand. If you go to Stamps.com. With Stamps.com, you can print real U.S. postage for any letter or any package right from your home or office, babe. All available 24 hours a day, seven days a week when it's convenient for you. Yeah, it's all about when it's convenient for me. Stamps.com will even send you a digital scale so you can weigh your letters and your packages. You can print the exact amount of postage every time. It's so easy to use. You just click, print, mail, and you're done. Stamps.com is a no-brainer. Stamps.com will save you so much time. You can access all the services of the post office right from your desk. It's never been easier to send out your letters and packages. Honestly, Alan and I have been really busy with our jobs, with the podcast and, you know, the million listens. Thank you again for that. One million. And with the kids and the holidays coming up, we rely on Stamps.com to print out shipping labels so we can send out all the mails, mail and packages. It, it could not be easier. And we've been busy, babe. Mm -hmm. We've worked out a special offer with Stamps.com yeah. for our podcast listeners. It includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale without long-term commitments. Oh, you know how I feel about commitment. It makes me break out in a rash. Mm -hmm. So go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Raspberry. That's my last, well, my last maiden name. That's stamps.com, enter Raspberry. That's R-A-S-B-E-R-R-Y. After you click on the microphone at the top of the homepage. Yes, because with stamps.com, you never have to go to the post office. Again! Never! Now, as I promised, Oprah and her favorite things list. Now, let me tell you, there are 102 gift ideas this year from Oprah. There is no way in heck I'm going to go through all 102. First of all, some of them are boring. 102. 102. Some of, she literally, from what I understand, she has like her people, they accumulate a bunch of stuff for her to look at, and she literally goes through and touches, feels, tastes, and all these different things. Or from whatever she experiences throughout the year, and she puts them on her list. So this is really, truly picked by Oprah. Um, and then she compiles them into this list. Um, for men? Are for these men? For, are these for men? No, it's just different gift ideas. Oh, for men, women, children, everything. Oh, I thought you were going to have all these ideas for me. 102? No. Mm. But I mean, there might be something on this list that you'd be interested in. Okay. A lot of these items are available on Amazon. Not everything. But a lot of it, because some of it, like alcohol and stuff, I don't think you can get through Amazon. But anyway, remember, though, if you are shopping with Amazon, you are able to choose a charity to benefit from all your shopping. It doesn't cost you anything, but Amazon will donate a portion of your uh, purchases to a charity. I choose Kids Kids. Mm -hmm. So every time I go, um, it's like smile.amazon. It automatically reminds you, so you don't have to remember that every time. But you can, you know, I've, I've shopped so much on Amazon, and Kids Kids gets a donation. Very nice. It's really nice. So Very we're nice. going to do that. At Amazon. So anyway, like I said, a lot of the gifts Oprah chose, she does have her own like Amazon section. But if you go to Oprah.com and look at the list there, many of the items have a discount for like 20% if you use her name Oprah. Okay, that's usually the code. That is the code for everything. 
So anyway, or Harpo spelled backwards. That's it is Harpo spelled backwards exactly. So anyway, if you have an Oprah, here's just a few of the highlights. I can't, like I said, I can't go through the whole list, but I love Oprah. <laughs> Not as much as some people. They're at Rabbit, but she has this thing called Super Soul Sundays where she sits down and she talks to people, you know, who have, you know, a lot of, a, 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 a beautiful message to share. Let's just hmm. say that. And so she's compiled some of the wisdoms from some of her favorite guests into a book. And this is a great gift to someone, to give someone who has everything, you don't know what to give them, and you know they love Oprah. It's called Wisdom of Sundays, Life-Changing Insights from Super Soul Conversations by Oprah. So like I said, it's this weekly show she does where she sits down in her yard at her home and she talks to them. And it's a beautiful book. Um, the Oprah, Oprah website says it's $28, but if you go to Amazon, it's less than $17. Bucks. BarnesandNoble.com has the same thing for um, about a dollar more. Hmm. So it saves you a little money that. there. Now, this gift was on Oprah's list last year, and it's back again this year. I did buy this last year for our daughters. The Pet Sounds. Little, um, oh, yeah. These little mini Bluetooth wireless speakers. Yeah. They've added cool. more. They, they're shaped like little animals, and they've added more animals this year. So they're really cute. They, they have, sounded pretty good, too. The, the sound quality is yeah. crazy. These things are literally less than two inches tall. But the sound quality is crazy good. Yeah. They come like a kitten, a dog, a cow, a penguin, a panda, an owl, all these sorts of animals. And they're 30 bucks each. But if you go to myaudiopet.com and use the code Oprah, it'll save you 20 bucks. I mean, 20%. Nice. So that's a nice gift. That and, is a nice and, gift. And Emma Kelly still has hers. Brooke, your daughter, it, it accidentally got broken. But we might have to replace it. Oh, really I didn't know it, it got broken. Yeah, she left it in the car, and we pulled the seat back, and it got crushed. Oh. Yeah. So they're tiny little things, but they're, the quality's really good on that, and that's a cute gift to give to someone. You know, 30 bucks, 20% off. What is that? Six twenty-four. dollars 30 bucks, 20% off. $24, dollars, right? So that's a yep. good gift. Now, this next gift is... All right, this is a warning, because I saw this on Oprah's gift list last year, and I gave it, and nobody liked it. Nobody. It was a key ring called the Orbit key ring, and it's supposed to help you, like, if you lose your phone, you press a button, and it's like GPS or something, and it helps you find your phone. Remember that? Remember the key ring? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? I, well, I don't know that I ever opened it. I think I just... Right. Yeah. Everybody I gave it to were like, oh, it was a big dud. <laughs> Nobody liked it. I... I mean, it's a good idea. And I bought I like I... I bought like half a dozen of these. First of all, because it was on Oprah's favorite things, I want to be able to say this is one of Oprah's favorite things. Nobody liked it. I was I got to the point where after I gave it to like the first two or three people, and then I knew I still had like three or four of these left to give. I was embarrassed to give it. So wait a second. This was a key ring that had like a G GPS. It has like a GPS chip on it. in it or something. So if you lose. Your keys or your phone or something like that. There's supposed to be like an app and you can find it. So Orbit has now come out and Oprah has it back on her list. And it's shaped like a little credit card and you keep it in your wallet. And so that way, if like you lose your wallet, you can go to this app and find it. If you lose your phone. I'm just telling you, y'all. If that sounds like something that's exciting to you, order it. But I'm telling you, nobody liked it on my list. I don't know why Oprah loves it. Because it does sound like a good idea. Until you give it to it's someone. It's kind of a dud. It was a huge dud. And In fact... It's a $40 dud. Can I re-gift mine? Go ahead. I don't care. I had one left. I gave it to charity. I donated it to Goodwill because I was too embarrassed could, to give it to anyone else. Who could I give mine to? I don't know. What but about, it's 40 bucks with a 20% off code if you use Oprah. I think Al might But want nobody it? wants this thing. I'm telling you to save your money. What about Al? He's got a lot of keys. He won't want it. Now, I'm thinking about doing this because there was a couple of different gifts that she had for uh, pajamas, matching Christmas pajamas. How do you feel about that, babe? Matching family Christmas pajamas. <laughs> do you like that or no? Well, for me and you? And the kids. <laughs> Everybody wearing matching pajamas. I would do that. That sounds that like something would be you a, would do. That would be a hilarious bit. This is actually pretty reasonable. These are buffalo plaid holiday family pajamas from BurtsBeesBaby.com. Again... 20% off with the Oprah code. They're originally from 10 bucks to 40 bucks, which I didn't think was too terribly bad. But I went on the website today and the men's were all sold out. Oh. So I'm hoping they'll restock because it's still early enough before the holidays and because people are supposed to have the heads up. Hey, you're going to be on Oprah's favorite things. You're going to have sales going through the roof. And I guess they underestimated 
the amount of men that would be on board because the men's sizes were sold out. So what's the style of these? Is they're like, um, they're onesies or they're like flannel with the pants and the shirt. So you can do the onesies or the two piece, but they're like long sleeves and long pants. But like, like what kind of like design? Do they look like long? Oh, long like big jumps. plaid, like oh, buffalo plaid. plaid. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. There's different styles. Even if you don't get the ones that Oprah recommends with Burt Spee's baby, um, you could we could still do matching holiday pajamas. That would be funny. Okay, I would do that. They wouldn't. It'd be like basic because I think a lot of families do that. But who cares? It's fun. Everybody but all of us it. would have to. All six of us would have to dress up. Right. Yeah. It's a family thing. Right. And they even had like a matching um, on the Burt Spee's babies a matching kerchief for the dog, so you could get a dog kerchief. Um, she also had, cause I know you like hot and spicy things. My father likes hot and spicy things. Oprah has this, the good hurt fuego, a hot sauce lover's gift set. I'm picking out things that are kind of reasonably priced that I think are practical. These are seven hot sauces ranging from mild to super hot and they're shaped like dynamite sticks. I gave your dad one of those last year. You gave him a different hot sauce set. This is one that's shaped like dyna uh, dynamite sticks. Isn't oh. that cute? Yeah, I guess so. These are originally 35 You get seven of them, but 20% off with Oprah at thoughtfully.com. Okay. And then I really love this one, too, because I love doing um, jigsaw puzzles with my daughter. Yeah. And we got this really huge one last year. We worked on it for a long time together. It was really a fun thing to do if you have the space to do it. You have to have a really big-ass table to do it. But um, Mad Cat Puzzles, I Am Puzzles. Mm -hmm. And these are like poster size, but they're animal heads. Hmm. And they have like horse heads. Like a horse head? A big horse head, a panda head, a wolf, a lion, a longhorn, a bear. So many to choose from. They're eighteen to twenty five dollars each, twenty percent off with the Oprah code at madcapgames.com. This is a lot to remember. So if you go to Oprah.com, that's a all lot to remember, babe. Well, there's hundred and two things on there. These are some of the highlights I wanted to give you. Like I said, there are some reasonable things on our list. If you just want to be able to say, like I did, I got you something from Oprah's list, but don't get her that go don't get any by that orbit thing because they hate it. But there are some ridiculously expensive things on there. Hmm. Like Oprah, I don't know who she's selling this stuff to. $69 chicken pie. How would you feel if you got an in the mail a chicken pie? A, Literally. Like a chicken pot pie? It's a big pie, like, a, like the size of an apple pie, but inside is like diced chicken. But Oprah loves it. If you go to this place's website, I don't know about it that. says Oprah's favorite pie. Apparently, she tasted it when she was traveling around. $69, but it comes with free shipping. I'm not going to... I'd be... Why are you sending me a pie? Yeah, It's Oprah's that. favorite pie. So there's that. She has an almost $300 bottle of tequila. She has a bicycle that starts at $1,150. Because you can personalize it and make it your own. A $2,000 Samsung TV that when you turn it off, you can replace it. It's got a frame around it, like a picture frame, hmm. and you can put a work of art in it. So I guess it's like for rich people that don't want to look like they have a TV in their room, mm -hmm. but it looks like a, a portrait painting. Right. That's $2,000. But for Oprah, that's normal. Um, they have literally some sticks in a bowl for $120, and she said it's to like start fires. Sticks in a bowl? Stick, I'm not lying. Go to Oprah.com and look at, there's sticks in a bowl. And if somebody gives me sticks in a bowl, there's... I don't we, understand what that means. It's fire starter sticks in a bowl. $120. Well, who's going to buy that? Exactly. It's on Oprah's favorite things. It's well, like some si silly things on there. She should have gone through this list. A $225 sleep shirt that looks like a man's dress shirt. It looks just like a man's dress shirt. So wear your husband's dress shirt to bed. It's $225 for a man's dress shirt. And then she has some Tory Burch, uh, Tory Burch track pants that she said Reese Witherspoon introduced her to, and she's so excited. These things are like $200. And you can get these track pants for like $20 at Nordstrom Rack if they're not Tory Burch. I'm just telling you, there's some silly stuff on there. Hmm. But something I got last year that Oprah put on her list, and I've heard a lot of people talk about. Alan's bored out of his mind right now, by the way. But I know there are people out there that care about this, so I'm going to keep talking, mm -hmm. even though my husband's giving me dead eyes. Just keep rolling. Greenberg smoked turkeys. Have I've you never, heard of these? No, I've never I had never heard of, heard of these until last year. Somebody gifted us one. You I've heard to, of uh, Omaha Steaks. You really have to like... I've heard of Butterball turkeys. Okay, these are Greenberg. Oh. These are smoked turkeys, and you really have to like smoke because they're very smoked. I like smoke. But you go to gobblegobble.com. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And the prices range from about $34 to $80. There's no discount code. Uh -huh. But Oprah is, like, in love with them. She said it's one of her all-time favorite things. 
all time. So it's gobblegobble.com if you don't want to cook and you like smoked meat. How can this be one of her all time favorite things? She's well, got she 120 says, freaking things well, on the list. She puts some things on the list over and over. Then again, she liked that Orbit thing. And she put that on there twice. Okay. All right. And then also, let's see. I found out that, oh, you remember the truffle salt I ordered? Mm -hmm. Oprah loves it too. And she says she literally carries it around in her purse and pulls it out at restaurants if they don't have truffle. So, um, there, it's a little bit pricey because truffle stuff is expensive. But SabatinaTruffles.com, she's promoting a $55 truffle salt set. But you get 20% off with Oprah. And if you don't subscribe to her magazine, the whole thing's at Oprah.com. A lot of things are listed on Amazon, but remember, if you go to Oprah.com, you can get the discount code. You can find out which, because not everything has it. So, you can, might save some money there. I'm done with my Oprah list, Well, babe. the moral to that story of all that stuff on Oprah's list is the birth of Jesus is all about retail sales, babe. Oh, stop it. I know. We can be, like, real literal and stuff. I know what it's about, but still, you have to give presents. Yeah. You want me to? You want us to not give gifts this year? No, there's some good ideas on there. I just don't know that 120 of them was. 102. 102. And I didn't do 102. I did like eight. Yeah, there were some good ideas on there. Some of them I didn't get, but there there are a couple of good ones on there. Yes, yeah, this sticks in a crock. If somebody, if some rich person, I mean, that's maybe what rich people give each other to be ironic. I mean, give something. me a bike, give me a TV, but sticks in a bowl, meh. The keychain, meh. I'm serious, y'all. Don't get that. The All chicken right. pie, meh. Sixty-nine dollars for chicken pie, yeah. and she had other cakes and stuff on there too that you could ship across the country. Yeah, no, that's a good look. Good, good thought starters. The green, the Greenberg turkey. I'm telling you, though, a lot of people are like that's the best turkey ever, and yeah. but it's really smoky. If you like smoke, you have to like smoked meat. Just a warning on that. Yeah, that's important information. It really it is. is. It is. All right, so that was my Oprah's favorite things. Woo. And you never have to hear that again, honey. Well, can we save the next one until next year? Next Christmas? Maybe. Okay, good. Or maybe I won't do it. <laughs> maybe I'll let you do a, a Christmas list next year. What is your philosophy when it comes to making a Christmas list? Do you just make a really short list and ask for exactly what you want? want? Or do you make a really big list and just kind of hope for the best and hope you get most of the things oh, on your list? Do I make a list for what I want? Yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't usually do that. My family usually, like my mom and my sister-in-law, they'll ask me what I want. But that's the only people that ever ask. Oh. Every, you know, what I do is I make a list of everybody that I need to buy a gift for, and I usually do that sometime around October, and then I start plugging in what I get people. Oh, okay. So I have a, I have a keep it a running list on my computer, you have and your... I've already bought stuff for your mother, for my father, for our kids. I've already, I've been knocking some stuff off. A lot of the sponsors for my sandwiches and love, and I'm going to be doing some shopping from our sponsors because they grew yeah, really great are. offers. Well, yeah, and we, they're cool sponsors too. We got good stuff. Yep. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some more of our sponsors in a minute. Okay. But, you know, this week I'm heading for the Kids Kids trip. Yeah. And that's kids why Kids. Yeah. The day that's the, exciting. The day the podcast comes out is the day I leave for Kids Kids. Um, I think this is the 26th trip. To Orlando, right? To Orlando, Florida. Not Disneyland. Disney World. Mm -hmm. This is a charity started by Kid Craddock who passed away um, four, four years ago in July. And uh, when his wife was pregnant with Caroline, that we now know and love, and who's running... The, the charity in her father's memory, mm -hmm. um, the doctors told Kid and Carol that your daughter's got a twisted femur and she probably is not going to be able to walk, be confined to a wheelchair. And, you know, of course, they were devastated, but, you know, they prayed about it. They, God, you know, it, give us the strength to deal with this because we're going to have a child that's going to have a disability. But, you know, if, if she's born healthy, if you let this child be born healthy, I'll I'll do something, you know, I'll, I'll pay you back, God, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, Caroline was born perfectly healthy. And so kids started Kids Kids, where he takes not only terminally ill children, but children who have life-altering conditions. Sometimes a child can be born with a condition that's going to affect them for their lifetime, which may only be 20, 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. So we take children of all, you know, we've seen everything. We've taken cancer. We've taken um, children who've lost the ability to walk in a, ter a terrible accident. We've taken a lot of um, cystic fibrosis children. Yeah, so, some of these like that. children are in very, bifida. very poor condition. Yeah, where you know, even I think some of them, you know, they haven't made it. We've had we've lost several kids, kids so over the years. This is a really important trip. I think not yeah. only for the children to have fun, but for the children's families yeah. too, just to kind memories. of have a normal time, right? The memories, yeah. And because of the donations of listeners, that's the only way we can do it. And we have 
you know, we've, we've brought in some wonderful sponsors and like Enchanted Fairies and Raising Canes, but we raised enough money to take the kids back again this year. Yay. And so we leave on Thursday. And with all the money you raise too, doesn't Southwest Airlines, aren't they able to yes. charter a jet and do yep. this big fancy send off for the, ch the yeah, kids? Yeah, it's and, huge. It's, yeah. it's first class. I mean, it's no expenses spared. They get a lot of special. They get one-on-one -on -one time with Mickey and Minnie instead of having to wait in lines. They get a lot of, like, they're called genie passes. So our kids, you know, they can, it's just they're treated like VIPs. They get the treatment like, you know, Kate Winslet would get if mm -hmm. she was at Disney World. And she'd get the VIP passes. That's what our kids get. So we That's love awesome. that. So anyway, we leave Thursday, and we're very excited about the kids' kids trip. So I just want to tell you that's where we'll be, and I'll have hopefully some updates for you about that later. I wish you could go with me, honey. I'd love for you to go with me. So you. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be like Jason Derulo this week. I'm just gonna be rolling solo. Well, I'm rolling you'll be solo. riding solo. I'm rolling solo. It's riding solo. I'm rolling solo with four kids. <laughs> <laughs> so you ain't gonna be partying too hard. Nah. nah. But I trust you. I've stocked the pantry. With lots of junk food, because I figured it'd be easy. Lots of Raymond in there, lots of uh, Tony's pizzas re ready-made. I got these little um, frozen little um, like sandwich bite things. There I you got go. corn dogs. I got fish sticks. I got. I didn't want to make anything too complicated for you. Yeah. Pretty much you can microwave it. Because I'm just a dumb guy. I, mean, I'm not, I, I just want to make it easy yeah, for you. Yeah, I, I couldn't. How could I cook anything? There's meat in the freezer if you want to thaw it out and cook it. Go ahead. I was trying to make it easy for you. Yeah, it, it'll be easy for me. Got some sunbeam bread in there. Oh, really? Making sandwiches. Maybe some bologna sandwiches. Mm -hmm. See, I took care of you. So anyway, that's what I'm getting ready to do. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be good on my weight loss challenge while I'm there. We'll see. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna do? You're gonna mm -hmm. be eating, you're gonna be eating fried bologna sandwiches. Let's <laughs> see how you do. Oh, you see how I do next Sunday when I weigh in. Got to make up another pound now. You show me. I got to make. <laughs> I got to make up another pound now. You carrying my load, honey? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. On your back. I don't know. This is the weirdest thing because you made it like a combine. We have to lose a combined twenty now, twenty one pounds. So one of us could lose two, and the other one has to lose nineteen. It's not really fair. How is that not fair? Because one of us doesn't have to lose that. I mean, I could lose nothing, and you could lose twenty one. Well, or I could keep gaining and make it even harder for you. Or you could just take <laughs> care of business and just do your thing. Oh, whatever. We'll see. All right. You do your thing. I'll do mine. I'll do me, babe. You know what you have to do sometimes with your other real job? What's that? You have to do the hiring in your business. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And if you're like Alan and you have to do the hiring in your business, obviously you want to hire great talent because it is a reflection of you. It's not easy hiring people, but you don't have to get lost in a huge stack of resumes to find a perfect hire. You just need the right tools. That's right. You need smarter tools. You need tools. smarter tools. Mm -hmm. Alan, this does apply to you. Like I said, it's what do you do hiring people for your company that you work for. And I've seen you go through the process in the past and it was really time consuming oh it sucked up so much of my time going through all the job sites and trying to find the candidate that came close to what i was looking for that's why i was really excited to find out about zip recruiter yes with zip recruiter alan can post his job listing to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click it's a huge time saver plus i know that my job listing is being seen by the right candidates because zip recruiters because of ZipRecruiter's smart matching technology. It goes to work immediately, notifying qualified candidates about the job within minutes of me posting it. And it's the best possible matches that start coming in. And another great thing about ZipRecruiter is you can get a head start on the interview process because you can add screening questions to your job post. It's no wonder that 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. And right now, our podcast listeners who are looking to hire some great people can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free when you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Kelly. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Kelly, K-E-L-L-I-E. -E. Let us know how it works for you because we would love to hear that you are a satisfied customer of ZipRecruiter.com. Boom. We got some good, Boom, babe. good services there. Babe. We did. And I hope our listeners are taking advantage of all these things. I hope so, too, because we work hard to get these sponsors so y'all can get some good stuff. Now, once again, back to the beginning of the show, we made the big announcement, honey. Yeah, let's review that again. Let's review it was the big so, announcement. It was so haphazard. Let's clink our glasses. We have, are drinking champagne. And, and I've been drinking more than you. And we've been expecting this. Clink. Let's, microphone. Clink. Hear that? Because we hit 
a million podcast listens as of today. Hello. One million. One million. You know, and a million, a million of anything is a lot. Wouldn't you say? Right. A million of anything is a lot. So a million podcast that's listeners? A, that's a lot. And we are so excited Ooh. about that. And we wanted to do something. We knew we were getting close. And so in the days leading up to that big milestone, which we actually hit, and Alan got a screen grab of it and everything, we we're going to post it. I went to my boss man, George, Amen. and I said, you know, is there something special we can do? We were brainstorming. Well, I'm hosting um, the annual New Year's Eve party that I did last year, and they amazingly, surprisingly asked me back because I didn't quite make it to midnight last year, but I'm going to make it this time. I'm going to pace myself, but it's at the Hilton Granite Park in Plano. It's a 121 in the Tollway in Plano, Texas, and we figured out a way that we could come up with two free tickets for someone who is a podcast listener, not only that, you get to go to the New Year's Eve party where there's food, open bar, pace yourself with me, people, a champagne toast at midnight, and dancing with DJ Mike Morris, who not only uh, did the New Year's Eve party last year, he DJed our wedding. He is awesome. And if you don't live here, we'll even pay for the airfare That's for right. you to get to Dallas. That's right. So you can fly here if you need it. And this is only in the United States. For podcast listeners listening outside of the United States, I'm really sorry. We appreciate you very much. We can't afford the airfare. No Canadians? I said in the United States. No Mexicans? United States of America. I'm sorry. We have to limit it somewhere. What about right? Australians? We have to cut it off somewhere. So anyway, the airfare is included. And if you're going to fly here, you have to have somewhere to sleep. And if you just have to drive up the road, you have to have somewhere to sleep. Well, so on New Year's Eve, you got to have somewhere to yes, pass out. Pass out. After midnight this year, right, honey? I'm going to make it all the way. So anyway, we've got your room. And that's for um, just our podcast listeners. i got to burp. Champagne makes me burp. So here's how you enter this contest. To celebrate the million listens, you go to um, Instagram. And follow us. Follow not our personal accounts, but our podcast account, A Sandwich and Some Lovin' with no G. It's easy to find if you're confused. I don't know what to help you with that. On the, in, on the Insta. On Instagram. Do follow people us. still call it the Insta? You do. Or do they call it on the, the IG? Or is it called the Gram? Or the IG. The IG. Anyway, follow anyway, us there. Follow us there. But that's, you have to do just a little bit more. You have to go one step further than following us. Obviously, yes, we're trying to get more follows on our Instagram. Let's just be honest. But we want to have some fun, too. So, we want you to post a picture of you Prefer enjoying what? Preferably a selfie. Of sure, you, uh, or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I don't... It's going to be the best way to do it. Well, no, because if you're eating a sandwich, sometimes it takes two hands, so you need somebody to take a picture of you. But it's you... Okay, whatever. Just post a picture of you and someone you love, the two of you, enjoying a tasty sandwich. Okay? A tasty sandwich. And then we want you to hashtag it after much debate... Even though it may be wrong, we're using the hashtag SandwichNYE17. We don't care if it's wrong. That's the That's hashtag. What it is. So hashtag SandwichNYE17. Yeah, if you don't follow the rules, you're going to have to be disqualified because we have to be fair. No, if you don't follow the rules, we're not going to find your picture. That's right. So we're not going to be able to see it. Right. So. And then another way we don't want you to be mad at us is we're not going to pick the winner. We're going to let our kids, our cute, sweet kids who would be devastated if anybody said anything mean to them, and we would be upset too, we're going to let them pick the winner. That way nobody can be mad at us, honey. They're used to picking winners. And boogers. Mm -hmm. Winners and boogers. So anyway, we're going to let the kids pick. So that's what you need to do, and we're going to announce the winner on the December 7th podcast, which as you know, we record a couple of days early. So get your entry in the sooner the better, and we're going to start going through them. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is going to be a lot of fun, and what a great prize. Yeah, it is great. It's a, it's a very valuable prize. Now, tickets are available. You can go to um, my social media page, and we'll probably put the link up to buy tickets on a sandwich and some ovens at yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, we'll post because all this on social people. media. We would yeah. love to party with everybody. It'd be fun. I mean, it's it's really a great deal. If you don't get the room and every, if you need the room, that's great too. You have to, you know, there's a link to do that through the website, the Eventbrite page they have it set up through. Yeah, but, even if you don't enter the contest, come to the party. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, it's an awesome New Year's it's Eve party. It's open bar. It's not like and, drink coupons where you get two and then it's a cash bar. No, it's open bar. And grub too, right? And food. Yeah. And dancing with an awesome DJ, Mike Morris. Mike Morris is the man. And we, and I, I am, you might not know this about me, you can't get me off the dance floor. Oh. I'm, I love dancing on New Year's Eve. 
I'm really, and I don't, I don't know that I'm necessarily good. Kelly will break. She, I mean, she'll break it down. I don't know that I'm good, but I do it. I dance. I'm, I bring the party. You, I, I'm, I've been called the party starter. You drop it low. I have dropped it. I have literally, <laughs> I'm not lying. And you might think I'm making this up, but I'm telling the truth. I danced so hard one night that I did drop it low and I couldn't get back up. You couldn't up. get up? My legs gave out. I believe that. My legs literally gave out. I couldn't get back up. I had to have people help me get back I up. I have video of you dropping it low. Well, that was me passed out. You have video of me passed out. <laughs> Should we tell that story real quick and then sign off? Oh, God. Okay. For the few people that are still watching. Yeah, for the few people that are still watching. This is actually actually a good story. So Hopefully my parents aren't watching. Well, Oh, we're announcing the winner again. On December 7th podcast, so I would suggest you get the entry in probably by December 1st. That's probably be on the safe side. Yeah. Give the kids a chance to go through everything. So last year was Kelly and I's first New Year's Eve together. And I thought... for you thought you loved me. I thought for sure my honey's going to give me a kiss right there at the stroke of midnight. We're going to count down, you know, 10... Nine, eight. And all I was the way. hired to be the host of this. Yeah, party. paid a lot of money. My only job was to count backwards. From that was 10. her only job was to dance, glad hand, and count down from ten. So at about a quarter to midnight, this one over here. Are you, did I make it that long? Yeah. Well, yeah, you did. You made it to about twenty to midnight, quarter oh, to midnight. Wow, I'm proud of me. I didn't know I made it that long. This one sits down in a chair and. Pretty much is is out is pretty much out, but with her eyes open. So to make <laughs> a lot pictures to prove it. To make a long story short, I discreetly grab Kelly's arm and take her out of the the big room because I was afraid she was going to yak there in front of all her her friends. But I never did. And guests. I but never she, but, threw but up. she never did. She never never threw up. But I thought she was. She really had that look about her. You know. You know when somebody's about to do that. So. I, you know, glided out of the room with Kelly on my arm and we got out into the hallway and she's getting heavier and heavier and heavier. We get to the elevator and, um, hit the, uh, hit the button, get on the elevator. And now at this point, she's dead weight. She's just hanging on me. Dead weight. Elevator opens to our floor. <laughs> Ding! I take one step out of the elevator. Kelly just goes, boom, to the floor. Fell right down on the floor. Yeah. Here's the host of the. I don't uh, remember any of this. Here's the host of the New Year's Eve Eve uh, uh, party. This is not. This is not a good look. Honey. Yeah. So I mean, it was fine, but I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, well, <laughs> it's about ten minutes to twelve now. About five minutes to twelve. So I pick her up. I do the fireman carry. I mean, she's out. I mean, she is out like a light. Go to her room. You picked me up. Yeah, I did. I picked Aww. you up. Uh, pretty much. I got her into the room, threw her onto the bed face down, oh, no. and I was so tired because I had lugged her all the way pretty much from the room up to, you know, her room, the hotel room. I went back into the, it was a suite, I went back into the other room where there was a couch. Such a gentleman. Yeah, there was a couch and I just sat there and I looked at my watch and now it's about <laughs> three minutes to 12. Oh, no. And I thought for a second about going back down to the room and counting down with everybody with else everybody that was still sober enough to count backwards. Yeah, and I think part time Justin actually filled in and he did the countdown. Yeah, he made it to midnight. Yeah, barely. But I, we spent our first uh, New Year's Eve. Kelly was face down on the bed, and I was sitting on a couch looking at my watch, and I counted down to myself. I said five, oh, babe. four, three, so two, one, and it was just kind of like. All right. Yeah. It's 2017. <laughs> and then he told me later he got up and went in the and he gave me a kiss on the cheek because he said he still wanted his midnight yeah, kiss. Yeah, I did. I felt so bad. So the point I of this. I felt bad, but not as bad as I literally felt the next day. Oh, I we, was we sick both felt. As a dog. We went hard. I that was night. so sick. And my mother and my father, they've never seen me in that state, but they had invited us over and they loved Alan. And they they did, loved Alan. Oh my God! Well, they they still do, but at the, at this point, I'm going back in time. They loved Alan, and they were convinced I was going to blow this. That I was going to ruin it. That Alan, that they every, at any moment I was going to blow this because they already had Alan pegged as their future son-in-law. This was in December, January first. Now before he proposed, they hadn't. You hadn't even mentioned marrying me at that point to them. Mm -mm. 
Oh my gosh. So Alan's, and we're supposed to go over for uh, black eyed peas and collard greens. That's what you do in the South. I'm sure you do it in other parts of the country too. But you have black eyed peas for good luck and collard greens so you get money. And I was like, we have to go. I was so sick. I was late. Alan drove me, I, my head down in the car the whole way to Alan's apartment. I was just sick, sick, sick. He went and laid me down on his couch. And he's like, what do you want? I said, I just want Diet Pepsi and Lay's potato chips. He went out and got me Diet Pepsi and Lay's potato chips. I just laid there and eat try, and ate them trying to get... Oh, I was so sick, With glazed, like, crumbs so on your chin and sick. grease on your chin. You were just kind of just shoving them in. You felt sorry for me. I did feel sorry for I you. I was... Oh, God, I'm not going to tell this. What? I was too mean. To oh, yeah, she was... was yeah. So I mean, she couldn't... so bad. She couldn't control herself. I was herself. like, I don't even care. I was so sick. And what, so, were you, what were you doing again, babe? <laughs> just a couple times. Just a couple times. Gosh. So anyway... So he's like, oh. we're going to call and cancel your parents. I'm like, we can't. We can't cancel my parents. They would just die. They'd be so mad. I couldn't do that. My mama cooked black eyed peas and collard greens. They expect you to come. So I went over there. My parents were so mad at me. They were so mad at me for being in that. And I don't blame them. You know, as the, as the, my mother even took me out to lunch later and had a talk with me about what she perceived to be my drinking problem. <laughs> and, and wasn't one of your, uh. Dad's quotes no, to you. No, don't, don't, what? don't, don't, don't bust everything. What? I've told enough. You don't want me to tell? Oh, oh, I don't know. Whatever you think, honey. Kelly. Oh. I could see the disappointment oh, no. in that man's eyes. Oh, no. I don't, I didn't know I told you that. <laughs> now he knows I told you that. You just had a good time the it night before. Bad. And, and I, Alan was and so I, sweet. You never made me feel bad about no. it until you just retold hey, it on the podcast. Hey. <laughs> well, it's a it's a funny story now, but hey, we've all been there. The moral yeah. to the story is, Con is come pace to, yourself. Pace yourself, but come to our party because or Kelly's party because this is going to be a party. Yeah. Telling you, um, you never expect that of me, would you? Being that that kind of party girl. Oh no, I've I've seen you it's very consistent. That. It's been very consistent I in, like the to dance. in the time that I've known you. And hey, but I'm telling you what I'm. I, not I know your bit when okay, it comes you to know partying. My bit, but I'll tell you what I'm not drinking this New Year's Eve is sweet tea vodka. That's what messed me up. Because you can't tell you're getting drunk with sweet tea vodka. If you ever hear Kelly say, you know, th this drink, <laughs> it just there's no alcohol in this. It's just it's just not strong. Cut her off. Cut her off, because she she can have three drinks, and then that fourth one, it's like, well, there's no there's there's no alcohol in this. Well, you you've just had three in the last fifteen minutes. Oh, it's not that bad. So not that bad. Let's just let's just uh, pace ourselves, All right? right? Honey, I'm gonna pace myself this New Year's Eve. All right, babe. How are and we doing? Hopefully, we'll have a fun person winning a sandwich and some lovin's Instagram contest because we want to party with fun people. And if you don't win, you know, buy tickets. It's it's really easy. I'm going to post the link um, on my social media page and on a Sandwich and Some Lovin's post social media. You post it on yours. You will find the link to buy tickets. But we hope you win if you enter the contest and we'll have that posted too. And hey, even if you don't win, I mean, I know everyone who participates wants to win. But even if you don't win, you'll be part of the Sandwich and Some Lovin' family. You'll, you'll, you'll get all our content on our Instagram channel. And anytime anybody searches for that hashtag, they'll see your picture and a lot of other really fun pictures that have people, you know, having fun with a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. We hope people have fun with it. Yeah, we do. And we'll, we'll hopefully see you on New Year's Eve. And we'll hopefully see you next week. Next week is uh, the podcast is going to be Thanksgiving, and it is going to come out on Thanksgiving Day. Thursday is the day for a Sandwich and Some Lovin's podcast, so we will have a special Thanksgiving edition. I am hoping, fingers crossed, that we might be able to um, get the kids involved a little bit and um, hear what they're thankful for. I mean, that's kind of cliche to do that on Thanksgiving, but it'd be really kind of fun to hear what the kids have to say and get their perspective on that. And um, we talk, may talk about our first Thanksgiving that we're hosting for 20 people at we, Evans Estate. We may talk about what we're thankful for. We may. We, we may get around to that. We may talk about our favorite Thanksgiving traditions and mm -hmm. foods and... Just Thanksgiving that. disaster stories. A lot, a lot yeah. to cover with Thanksgiving, but the first one we're hosting, a few things I need to get, take care of between now and then. We have to buy the turkeys. Alan um, is deep frying. It. Deep frying? We have to buy the fryer. You're yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fry a turkey. And Alan really wants me. I've never in all my years, I've never made a turkey. And you really want me to do that this year? Well, you're gonna have your mom and my mom helping. 
Advising, yeah. Advising. But I'm going to do that. So we got to do that. And I got to get the turkey. I mean, the ham. So I got to do all, I got a lot to do. It's a lot of meat. A lot of meat. We're meat eaters, people. Ooh. So um, anyway, that's Brit what we're doing. We'll talk about that on our next week episode, the Thanksgiving edition of A Sandwich from Salama. But you know what? It's not Thanksgiving yet, but we're very thankful for you. And thank you for listening. We are being, very thankful. Being part of the one million plus listens at this point now. I mean, we've said that a few times. We're excited about We're it. We're very excited. And that's a big, a big deal. deal. And, you know, I know people who listen, they, they tell friends and family. People see that you're listening, so they go out there and listen. So we really do appreciate it. And we it's, see your messages and stuff. One lady said she hadn't had a chance to listen to any of the podcasts, but she was going on a vacation to Mexico, and she downloaded all of them, and uh -huh. she was going to listen on her vacation. There, so. was, there was a gal at the 5K last night. She came up to us, and she goes, you know, I download all y'all's podcasts. I put them on my iPod or my phone. And that's how I train. Yeah. Every time I run, I listen to a, a podcast. And it so means a lot to us. That's really cool. Because we we're really just talking to each it. other. <laughs> Otherwise, if y'all weren't listening, we'd just be talking to each other. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty much what it sounds like when Kelly and I are just here talking. But yeah. there's probably a little more bickering. We didn't really bicker, did we, this time? <laughs> no, no, no. Like when we're here by ourselves. Like, oh, I thought you meant during the podcast. No, no, no. When we're here by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's not. No, there's not. Oh. Uh, Kelly did blow up today. She blew up. Like I said earlier, I came home to two cranky people. I was a cranky 11 year old and a cranky husband. And I was, I was fine until I finally snapped and then suddenly everybody's like, what? What? I wasn't cranky. I, I you know. <sighs> okay, Alan. I was 50 minutes in the car. I just, when I got home, I just needed a minute to. Just kind of All right. decompress. All right. Then work. I misread the situation. <laughs> All right. But I love you. Well, I love you too. I, I love, love you very much. I love you desperately. And I love and... doing the podcast with you. And here's to a million more listens, babe. Clink champagne glasses. Uh, okay. Do it close to the microphone for the sound effect. There we go. All right. All right. That was another edition of A Sandwich and Some love, and Thank you so much for listening. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good when you have a good sandwich. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta get that in. Gotta All right. get it in. Let me stop this. Stop. Oh. All right. We're done. Thank you. We started off with a lot of people listening. I think people were afraid that we were going to announce... Well, not afraid. Thinking we were going to announce we were pregnant or something. But as you know, that ship has sailed. So... Thanks for the rest of you that hung out the whole time. Because we know it's Monday night and football's on and everything. Bye. We appreciate it. So really quickly, it's 9.30 almost. We can answer a few little questions here. Clink, champagne clinks. Oh. Hi, Amber. Are y'all going to enter the contest? Who's going to come to our New Year's Eve party? Who's going to be there? Who's not even going to try to enter the contest? You're going to buy the tickets. <laughs> Terry's been here since the beginning. Thanks, Terry. See, Sonia likes it. I don't Bye. like the buy, Sonia. Bye. So anyway, we're excited about New Year's Eve, and I am going to make it. I'm going to make it to New Year's this year. I'm going to, because I'm honest to God, I'm surprised they invited me back. It was. I am bad. too. I am surprised they invited you back. You're going to win, Kim. Yeah, honey, will you rub my shoulders since you're doing that? You got to con your friends. Why you got to con your friends? All right. Well, hopefully y'all can go. Thanks, Kathy. We're going to really, you know, we, we're going to try to start really, with the podcast, we just kind of were doing it and like for fun and stuff, but we really are going to start to try to really just do a, we want to do a good job for you guys and we want y'all to want to listen and to get something out of it. So, you know, we're wrapping at this, you know, heading into the holidays, it's going to be kind of interesting, but in the new year. Oh, I mean, do y'all like we having got big plans? Yeah, do y'all like it when we have like special guests? We're thinking about taking the man's room because this is where we're kind of doing it and trying to maybe reconfigure this into a better do studio it. type we, thing. We do it like the studio, or right? we could go back to the we were doing the first few podcasts at the radio station, which was better because, well, oh, babe, that feels good right there. Do it hard. Um, thank you, baby. I don't mean to be bossy, but that feels good. Um, <laughs> If we do it at the radio station, we can take phone calls and we can interview people and the quality is better, you know, but what we'd have to do is say, Hey, we're going to be recording the podcast at two o'clock 
on January 15th or whatever so people could call in. So that'd be fun to do some live listener stuff. We'd like to, I'd like to do that, honey. Maybe we can do that with the podcast over the holidays, go into the studio. But that means our producer, Robert, has to go in. You watch all the podcasts. I have to have my daughter be my photographer. Yeah, I hope you enter. I hope you win. We're going to let the kids choose. We, man, we were debating on how to do this contest tonight, but we think that's the easiest way, and the kids would love to be involved in picking a winner. We're comfy at home. Yeah, we got to do something. This blinds behind us. I've been looking for window treatments. I've been looking for window treatments, and I haven't had any luck to make it look better. But we need to reconfigure this man cave into more of a studio, I think. Thank you, Crystal, for listening, and Sonia, or Sonia, maybe it's Sonia, not Sonia. Where do you submit the photos? Go to Instagram and follow us at a sandwich and some lovin. And while you're there, post a picture of you enjoying a sandwich with someone you love, with someone you love, and hashtag it sandwichnye17. After much debate, we decided to go with 17 instead of 18 because New Year's Eve is still 17. There you go. Get a curtain with some sandwiches on it, babe. That was someone's suggestion. We might have to have that special made. Yeah, Crystal, I said your name. Hashtag sandwich NYE17. Yes, Michael. Were we right to go with 17 or should it have been 18? We're going to post this, the contest information on our social media so y'all have plenty of chances to win. We're going to announce it on December 7th, so we probably should make the deadline like... What, November 30th or December 1st? We should probably do that. Let's do that. We'll put that in the rules. It is Sonia. All right, see, I did I did guess that right. Black lights would spice up the atmosphere. Black lights? Wouldn't that show, like, germs and stuff and weird stuff? I want to see this. See what? This movie. Oh, yeah, we're going to see it. We interviewed J.K. Rowling. Sorry, there's a commercial on for Justice League during the Monday Night Football. It is 17, Amber said. Don't change the man cave too much. Well, it's just not practical for what we need it for. I mean, what are, what it's are, a small... Will you even talk? Don't you act like this is all my idea. Let me have my man cave. Don't act like this is all my idea. You said let, the same thing. So let me have my man cave. You said the same thing, that it's not... Thought, it's either that or we're going to have to move. I thought you were the big proponent. Well, a guy's got to have his space. He's got to have his own space. I want you to have your own space, now but it's not... you're coming here trying to change my space. It's not practical for what we're doing. Come here trying to change my space. Babe, you know it's not practical. What? My space. So I don't know what we're going to do. We're either going to have to move... Or we have to reconfigure the man's room a little bit. Oh, you're, his, her 10-year-old loves you. <laughs> That's nice. Tuesday morning for window treatments? I've tried everything, but I mean, I haven't... I went to t Tuesday morning the other day, but I wasn't looking for window treatments. I was looking for Thanksgiving tablecloths. I didn't think about Look, it. Stacey Swafford, do y'all sell merchandise? We don't right now. Well, why are you looking at me? We don't right now. It's like, you know, we had to get a certain amount of listeners before we started selling merchandise. Would y'all be interested in buying a sandwich with some loving merchandise? Cool. Is that something you would be interested in? If it was cool. Because, I mean, we could make a lot of stuff and then we're just stuck with a lot of stuff that nobody wants to buy. And we could use some to do as giveaways. But, you know, we're just kind of figuring out where we can take this thing. I'm sipping on Barefoot Bubbly. We do, because we're celebrating one million sleepy. listens. Click, click. So. And the reunion glasses that we got when we got engaged. They gave us those. See? A phone case. A phone case. Yeah, at home does have great See? Stuff. Natalie says, I would love that. Yes. All right, we'll look into that. No, no, Laura, you didn't start anything. It's just something we talked about, but we just didn't want to be too premature I would buy with it. anything. Sure, if it was cool. See yeah, that? we just didn't want to be premature. Wake up, Alan. Oh. Alan oh. looks bored. That's, that's just, thank you. That's just the look I have on my face all the time. Imagine how I feel. I'm doing the podcast and he's looking like that. <laughs> I, I, it was. I know I had fun doing it, babe. It's just how's I, the logo creation? We got. Going? Uh, uh, we just we haven't got nothing's one that like, we like. Nothing's made our hearts sing. Yeah, we haven't got one that we just really like. Makes our hearts sing. There's not. It's not that they've been bad. It's just nothing's like made our hearts sing. We may just have to pay for one, babe. I think we do. I think we need to invest in that. 
Who we need to invest? Not that they weren't good Look, submissions. Look, Stacy Swafford, I'd pay any amount for your merch, especially love any sweat, amount. Maybe especially love sweatshirts. My snoring problem's a lot better thanks to that Snore RX thing. Yeah, people think we're getting paid from them, and we're not. Hashtag not an ad. I wonder if anybody has gotten it yet that we gave away. They I were... had a friend um, that I used to work with at my old company, and he messaged me just and said, "Hey, I heard you were talking about some." I told him he went out and bought it, mm -hmm. and he said it saved his marriage. I'm telling you, it's Alan does not snore. He'll he'll start to fall asleep without it. Like last night, we were just. We were so tired from the 5K. We just laid down and he fell asleep and immediately snore. Immediately. It doesn't cure your snoring. It stops your snoring. So you have to wear it. If you don't wear it, you snore. So as long as he puts it in, we're good. But man, he hit that snore immediately because I'm not used to it anymore. I hit what? You hit that snore, that one. <sighs> when? Last night. I did last night? I said, I said, put your mouth in put your mouthpiece in and you, you roll over and put it in and you were done it was good <laughs> somebody said somebody said this is too boring i'm out <laughs> you know that's fine i get it uh, i get it my question would be then why are you watching me hmm. what's going on with the cowboys besides not having zeke well they're i mean if you want to talk football i'll ta talk football they're missing uh tyron smith their best left tackle um, they're they're missing their kicker, who's the best kick, one of the best kickers who ever played the game, and they're missing Sean Lee, who's their best defensive player, and they're missing Zeke, so they're missing four of their best players. Now, I'm not trying to make an excuse, but those are four really good players, and that's going to hurt them missing those guys. Y'all are never boring. People have issues. No, we're boring sometimes. I mean, people are boring sometimes. It's fine. Did you change the password? Yes, babe. I, I told you that. Snore RX. Snore RX. You have locked me out of this no, thing. No, I haven't. Okay, look. Capital B. No, it's not capital. Well, there you go. I thought it was capital. No, I never said capital. Sorry. I was just checking something. Howdy from Kentucky. <gasps> yeah, I know. I was just looking at the numbers again. A million listens. That's so awesome. Look. Oh. Well, yeah. It's like... Exciting. Can you make your glasses sing? What does that mean? Oh, that whole thing, like, the... That thing? What? No, I can't. No. Yeah. No, I can't do that. I remember, um... What's her name? Sandra Bullock did that in Miss Congeniality. I don't know how to do that. Miss Congeniality. I don't know what else is on our... We've knocked out just about everything on the bucket list except for... Um, I was going to read three bro I books. Really. I read one. Well, I... I wanted to go saltwater fishing. I'm not... I, I kind of dropped the ball on reading a book a month because I got bogged down with beach music. But I did read another book. In I like read a book in between reading beach music. So if I can finish reading beach mu music and read, I think, one or two more books, I'll have one a month average. So I need to do that. Crystal, that is not a bad gift to give your husband for Christmas, that Snore RX. I don't know if you want to give it as a Christmas um, gift. Then give it as a stocking give it stuffer. As just, just give it give to Give it him. as a stocking stuffer. I wouldn't do that as a Christmas Why? gift. Why? Because it's like giving a woman a... Oh, a thigh, a thigh. Yeah, it's like, like giving a woman thigh master. And a, you know, unless she really wants and asks for it and says, "I really want a new iron for Christmas." That's just something you just give. It's not like a, I don't know. Mm. I mean, you can give it as a Christmas gift. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know. Give something else. Thank you, Kathy Bro Smith. Just congratulations on a million. She's, she's, Thank she's, you. She, she's one of our best listeners. Come to New Year's Eve, Kathy. Yes, it works. Not a good gift idea. Well, but I, 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 I mean, I don't. I, I think you just give it. I don't know that you give it as a Christmas gift. Give it as I a, just would give it. Give it as a uh, stocking stuffer. It's a hundred dollar stocking stuffer. I gotta go. I got a lot to do. Yeah, Missy agrees with me. It's not like you know what I'm saying. It's it's a marriage saver. Not that our marriage was in trouble, but gosh, 
Sleep is so underestimated. Julie, come to New Year's Eve. If you go to Kelly Raspberry Facebook pages, both of them, the public and the private, just scroll down a little bit and I have the link. It's an event bright. That's how they're using it. Yeah. You love your honey snoring, Wendy. He doesn't snore as loud as the, some of these others. It's definite. And with Alan, it wasn't just the snoring. It was the choking. The choking was what was so, because it was beyond snoring. It was sleep apnea where he was choking and I was waiting for him to catch his next breath. And when he, when he would start to breathe, it was just this scary choking. I was choking. It was choking. It was bad. It was beyond snoring. Why'd you take my hat off? Because it didn't look cute on me. You look good. Normally I look cute in hats. Who looks good in hats? Me. But I don't, I don't look good in a flat bill. Who looks good in hats? Me. This girl. Me. But not tonight. My face is too fat for a hat right now. Hey. I've gained so much weight, y'all. It's not. Here, I can. I get along with the best on the radio. It, every day is different. Well, Kim, if you're in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, you could still win, maybe, and then you could get the airfare to come in because we're giving away that for New Year's. Tell you how what works the contest or the Snor RX? Hey, Joshua. I'm going to make it to midnight this year. I'm going to make it. StoreX replaced CPAP. Alan never had the CPAP. He didn't want the CPAP. This is instead of the CPAP. It stops his snoring and it stops his choking because he's not snoring. Good night, Lola. Mara, are you going to New Year's Eve? Or are you going to try to enter the contest? Or are you going to try... The airfare is for two, Brittany. The tickets, airfare, and hotel room are all for two people. How the Snorax works, Karen, it's like a if, a, if you or your husband or the man have ever played sports, it's like a mouthpiece. So it, it looks like it's just clear plastic, like dentures almost is the way it looks. And so you boil it in water because it makes it pliable, right? And then you bite into it. Is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. And then it shapes to your teeth. And then it has a hinge on it that is preset at three millimeters or centimeters? Millimeters. Three millimeters. And it can go from one to six millimeters. So it positions your jaw out. It pushes like, your bottom jaw out go. three millimeters. Three yeah. millimeters. And if that works for you, that's where Alan left it like on the factory setting was three. And it worked for him. His jaw was sore for like the first two nights because it was just getting used to it. But now it doesn't bother him. And if that doesn't work, you can try adjusting it from one to six millimeters and it stopped the snoring. There you go. And we don't know if it's 100% for everybody, but we know it worked for Alan and that's all we can say. We're not getting paid by them. We literally just love it. What's the announcement? Ellen, we hit a million listens. Our podcast to hit a million listens. So to celebrate, we're giving away uh, tickets to our New Year's Eve celebration that I'm hosting. And I guess by default, Alan's co-hosting with me. But um, Am I co-hosting? Well, I guess by default, you're just there oh, with just me. Oh, just because I'm related. But I'm working. Because, just because I'm related, not because I'm on the, the ticket. Yeah, you ain't getting paid. It's all for me. <laughs> I'll let you share my free ring. <laughs> but we're giving away um, airfare tickets and it's open bar, which is what messed me up last year, so I'm going to pace myself this year. And if you need it, if you're local, we're not going to fly you in, obviously. But if you need it, we'll fly you in. Our boss man, George, has offered to pay for that. Amen. You go to Instagram to win, and you follow a sandwich and some lovin'. Hey, Jim Mitchell, shout out. <laughs> um, you follow a sandwich and some lovin' on Instagram, and then you post a picture of you and the one you love. It can be anybody you love having a sandwich, enjoying a tasty sandwich, and you hashtag sandwichnye17. And then our children are going to go through all the entries and pick the winner. So be creative if you can, because the kids are going to just pick whatever's colorful and bright and fun, you know. That way we're out of it. How do I allow my honey to surprise me by asking me to marry him when I'm always money managing everything? I don't know. I guess you'll have to like start sticking away some mad money or open a credit card that you are not aware of. Can he do that? Can he go to like a jewelry store and open a line of credit without your knowledge? Well, there's a will. He There's a way. He can surprise you. 
Hey, Kristen. Yeah, I've been doing it in Dallas uh, radio for 23 years. It'll be 24 in May. And I'm, honey, when I hit 24 years, I'm like, y'all need to start playing on my 25th. I'm in a big party. You asking me if Alan gets an allowance, or are you asking the other listener if he gets an allowance? The tickets, if you go to Eventbrite, let me see how much they are. I'm going to go to Facebook, because I don't have it all memorized. I'm going to go to the Kelly Raspberry page. Did you see that picture of me frozen? It was bad. I look good. Um, scroll down a little bit, because we got our 5K pictures up. I'm going to scroll down, scroll down, and it says... 106.1 KISS FM, Dallas-Fort Worth, New Year's Eve. So it's the official local Dallas radio station party that I'm hosting. You click on that picture, and it'll take you to the Eventbrite page. And general admission with dinner and drinks is $138 per person. But if you buy couples admission, it's a, save a couple bucks. It's uh, $270 for the couple, but then you have to pay like a ticket fee, like $17 and something. But look, you're getting, I know that sounds pricey, for a couple, $270 plus $17 is $287. So let's just say $290. So it's $145 each, basically, right? After you do all the math. And you get food, open bar, and it's not cheap stuff. They had really nice alcohol there um open bar and then a champagne toast at midnight dj mike morris is playing and he's wonderful he's excellent you won't want to sit down and you get to hang out with a bunch of other listeners and it's a lot of fun get dressed up and with the contest not only because so the tickets for couples after the fees and everything is roughly 290 dollars um dinner open bar as much as you can handle and we're going to handle it this year um and the dancing and a champagne toast at midnight it's not too bad. And we have a fun photo booth with um, Simple Booth. And then we're going to, with the contest, we're going to do airfare if you need it to fly in and also the hotel room. But if you want to, you can buy the hotel room. They have a package there for the for everybody, too. Yay. It's the one, it's the, the Hilton Dallas Plano Granite Park, the one at 121 on the tollway. The problem last year we had is was at a different hotel the year before. So for New Year's Eve, 2000. 16 or whatever. No, that was last year. The year before, people went to the wrong hotel last year. But there was another New Year's Eve party going on there. And the people there were nice enough just to let them stay. So they were partying, but not with us. So I feel bad about that. You went to the Thunderbird every year for Thanksgiving? I, I mean, for New Year's. I went to Thunderbird, but not for New Year's. I went with Benny. Remember my boyfriend Benny from Hartsville? His mother and um, we went one time to go dancing at the Thunderbird. They had a nightclub there too. But they have the Thunderbird buffet. I'm going to drink some more of this champagne because it's an hour of work. Y'all, I've got so much to do. I need to get going. I mean, really. One more glass and I'm going to go. Full glass. Okay, that's enough. And then I gotta go. I got a lot to do. Hey, Hartsville. Yeah, Benny Benet. He was from Hartsville. Passed away. So sad. His mother Cheryl's still there, though. Do y'all know Cheryl? Alan peaced out. Any sandwich. For the contest, any sandwich, just enjoying a tasty sandwich with the person you love. I know, Steve, that's why I don't want to throw it away, but I can't drink. Look, can you see? That's why I opened the cheap stuff because I knew we couldn't finish it all. But it's a big deal, uh, celebration, a million listens. So I should have broke out the nice stuff, but then I'd be drinking Dom Perignon by myself, and that's a waste. Yeah, Renee, I'm probably not going to get a lot done tonight. I need to get up early or tomorrow. I've got to write like a ton of commercials because we're leaving for kids' kids and I have to have everything turned in early this week because we leave on Thursday. So everything, I have to write like 
20 commercials, honestly, and get them recorded. It's bad. Will I do another listener meetup event? Yeah, Krista, we're trying. We're really excited about the podcast. It's like become a thing now. It was just like something fun, but now that so many people are listening, um, can I put the rest of the champagne in the refrigerator? I thought it goes flat. But when am I going to drink it? i got to go to kids' kids. Anyway, um, we're thinking about trying to do more with the new year. Once we get past the holidays, we're going to look at maybe doing more regular out in public, meeting people, doing more shows on the road, putting a little bit more content into the shows too, making them fun with guests and special things. And... Maybe some merchandise. People say they want to buy some stuff, which is fine. That's great. I just don't want to be too presumptuous with that. You know, we order t-shirts and nobody buys them. We could give some away, but I mean, to have stuff just for sale and nobody wants to buy it, that'd be bad. How long does champagne keep? I thought it goes flat after you open it. A couple of days champagne's good? I hope We opened a bottle of wine the other night because we were just like... We were just beat, and we had we just wanted like a glass of wine, so we opened a whole bottle, and now we've got that in there to finish. Thank you, Starla. Hey, Bryce. So I thought champagne would go flat. Well, goodness gracious, can I get this? I've got you know what? I got the wine condoms. This lady that lives locally, her and her husband, and, or her and her son, invented wine condoms. So I use rubber stoppers. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to drink the whole bottle. Heather. Bad influence. And, uh, you know, I'll probably, if I save it, I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to be going to Kids Kids. There's no way I'm going to drink it before Thursday. So I'm probably just going to dump it. Lower shelf toward the back of the fridge so it'll stay really, really cold. I don't think I get that cork back in. There's no way. But they have these things called wine condoms. And they're like little they like little wine condoms. And you put them on the top and you can turn it upside down. It doesn't leak. It's really good. You went to Christian school until third grade? I started Christian school in second grade. I went through 12. Are you kids already in bed? Emma Kelly's here. She's upstairs probably... She was really tired. She fell asleep and took a nap. She had a sleepover this weekend, and they stayed up really late and got up really early, and so she's still dragging from that. So she's probably already passed out. I'll go up and tell her goodnight in a second with my champagne breath. That's a good mom. Mm, put the end of a spoon or a fork in the champagne bottle to keep it bubbly for a couple of days. Yeah, but see, I'm going to kids' kids, and I don't think I'm going to finish it. I think I'm going to just dump this one. It's it's barefoot champagne. It wasn't cheap. It wasn't expensive. It's fine. And my nose is starting to itch. I'm becoming to drink Kelly because I've had more of my share than this. You homeschooled, Michael? I didn't know that. Cammy, I usually set my alarm for either 345 or 4, but I'm horrible about snoozing. My average snooze time is 45 minutes. Hey, Kenzie! We're trying to convince Kenzie and JC to start a podcast, and they're going to kick our ass. You can make champagne ice cubes? I didn't know you could freeze champagne. Y'all are teaching me so much. I didn't I know you can freeze you can't freeze vodka. You can freeze champagne. Haley, I snooze 45 minutes. It's like always. I don't know what it's just like my that's my thing. Well, all right, Byram, little birthday twins for our daughters. Hi, Arva. Thank you, Tanner. I've got to go to bed, y'all. I really do. I'm not going to finish the whole bottle. I might finish this glass. Oh, no, that's full. I'm not going to finish that. I had no idea you could freeze champagne. I'm going, I've got these ice cube trays for the big, I'm going to do that. I had no idea. 
This is so helpful. Look at y'all telling me stuff. Tell me something else so I can use. A vodka bong? I don't know. What, oh, I did that one time. <gasps> Is that the same thing as a funnel? Like funneling beer, funneling vodka? That was awful. I did that one time because I never drank beer. And I went to a college party and I'm like, oh, I'll just find a vodka instead. Don't ever do that. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Stupid. Yes, the radio is on from 6 to 10 a.m. Central Time. You can listen to uh, the K-Pod, KidNation.com. You can get links to all that. Tacos or pizza? I would probably choose pizza. Good night, Terry. Hey, Melanie. Love you. I'm not Catholic. I'm Baptist. Stopper that you pump and it removes the air and saves the alcohol. Works for champagne. Okay, that's good to know. Good night, Joe. Hi, Virginia. Pizza. I already answered you, Pablo. <laughs> oh, okay. You just saw that. Burnt toast works for upset stomach. Good night, Sean. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Mary Kate. Ooh, what? Hello, Virginia. All right, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, sweet pretty left a couple of glasses. I know, I need to get going. All right. I don't know what y'all are ooing about. This is not making sense. All right, Adriana, I've got to go. You have a good circus, Jeff, longtime listener. Thank you, Fonda. Add wine and freeze it and becomes a frozen wine margarita. Oh, okay. Did you get that from the fair? Weren't they selling that at the fair? I love you, Norm. Hello, Jessica. <laughs> I've got to go, y'all. Good night, Monica Sista. Hey, Kim Corey. <laughs> Proud to be Baptist as I toast you with my champagne. Good night, Michelle. Yes, Love Letters to Kelly will be back on Wednesday. We started doing it on Mondays, too, and sometimes randomly through the week. But definitely on Wednesday. Ooh, beer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, beer, ooh. Hi, Nicholas Plocek. Plocek? Hmm. Sweet dreams, Callie. Heather, I think I saw that at the fair. Good night, Denise. Boogaloo, Amanda, long-time listener. Sweet dreams, Melanie. Good night. Love you, Jessica. Good night. <laughs> Hi, Kelly and Chrissy. Good night. <laughs> I know, Lisa. That's fine. Meliss. Good night, Meliss. I love you, Kim Corey. Good night. Let's all say good night. Long-time listener, chocolate wine. Chocolate wine? Ooh. Good night, Becky, three-year-old daughter watching. Good night, sweet thing. Good night, Oregon, Roseanne. You can go. Don't feel bad, Tessa. Thank you. Good night, Kathy Bro Smith. Good night, Laura Kay. Say Haley. Say Haley. <laughs> Alan did flake. He's probably watching and making fun of me right now. Night night, Tiffany. Good night, Rosa. Good night, Sherry. <laughs> Why am I still doing this? Mia, good night. Good night. We were making mimosas at work. Well, I should give you some of this champagne. Hello, Kristen. She's just joining us, and I'm getting ready to say good night. Trying to win the Florida trip. Yes, Crystal. And then also try to win the tickets to go to our New Year's Eve party, please. Good night, Jenny. I love you, Mary Kate. Chocolate wine is gross. Have you had it? I haven't had that. Yeah, it is at the end. I'm a foster mom. My agents are looking for donations for our Christmas party. We are in DFW. Does the station do anything like this? Yeah. Submit for our Christmas wishes. We're going to start, we usually start granting those right after Thanksgiving. Good night, Arba. Good night, Connie. Kim, come meet us. Win the contest and come. Got to go upstate New York to get the chocolate wine. 
Is that the only place they sell it? Alan went to bed. He's might he might be on here, but he would be commenting if he was. He might be watching football. Good night, Michael. Good night, Chris. Sweet dreams, Karen. Bonita, you need a vacation. Where are you going? You want to go to Florida? Good night, Gabby. You're welcome, Wendy. Bonita, then you need to win that trip. You can either win the trip to Florida or win the New Year's Eve by entering our contest. We're going to post all the information. The podcast comes out Thursday, so we'll probably manage to post the information before Thursday. Probably tomorrow we'll get all the po information posted on our Instagram page because obviously we're trying to get listeners and followers on our Instagram page. Let's see if any of y'all follow tonight. Because I checked before we announced it on the podcast, even, I mean, on the recording, even though this isn't going to go until Thursday. Let's see if anybody's, we got a couple hundred, maybe 300 tonight. So thank you for everybody that started following us on a sandwich and some loving. But don't forget, post a picture of you and someone you love eating a sandwich, hashtag sandwich NYE 17, so you can maybe win a chance to come and party with us on New Year's Eve. Good night, Jessica. You're welcome, Becky. Thank you, Melanie. Good night, East Texas, John. Jana Stone Snow, honey, we're getting ready to say good night. Michael, you hadn't followed until tonight? My eyebrows are out of line. Are they, are they out of line? What does that mean? My eyebrows are out of line. I, have, I need to get Botox. What does it mean my eyebrows are out of line? Is it the lighting? Good night, Briley. All right, Bonita. Are you wanting to enter the New Year's Eve contest or you want to go to Florida? My husband's now watching. Which contest are you talking about, Bonita? The show is on next week. We will have a best of show over Thanksgiving. I think Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will be best of shows because we're taking holidays. But we'll be broadcasting live from Florida for the kids' kids' trip. Um, this weekend. Thank you, Debbie. I was like, my eyebrows are out of line. I don't know what that means. Florida. Benita, you need to listen tomorrow morning to the Kid Craddock Morning Show. Um, oh, shoot. Is it 740 or 720 Central? I just went blank on that. Champagne. But um, we asked you a trivia question about Florida. And if you're the correct caller. Hey, Lisa. Um, if you're the correct caller, you win a trip to Florida. Who says what, Tracy? Talking about my eyebrows? I don't even know what's going on with my eyebrows. Maybe this one's a little shorter than the other. I don't really care. I'm just curious. I don't know what they're talking about. Alan said, go to bed. I missed that. It is 740. Thank you, Holly. It's 740 Central for the contest, Bonita. Y'all, i got to make a turkey for the first time this year, and I'm going to be in Florida. And I need to buy a turkey, but I don't have room in the freezer, so I have to wait and buy it so it can be thawing out in the refrigerator. So if Thanksgiving's Thursday, I probably need to cook it in the middle of the night Wednesday, right? Wednesday into Thursday, which means I need to start thawing it out what day? Thank you, Haley. Thank you, Anastasia. Thank you, Tracy. Alan said, come to bed. All right. Hello, Jennifer in Texas. I'm not doing a brown bag turkey. I might do a browning bag, but not a trash bag. Thank you, Donna. What's Wednesday? What? Can you do it? Good night, Alan. <laughs> I don't I don't know what's up with my eyebrows. I don't get it. Thank you, Kristen. Yum champagne. All right, I gotta go. This has been really fun. Thaw it on Tuesday, so start thawing it in the refrigerator on Tuesday. Four days. Okay, that's before. Cook it through okay, so Thursday, so Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Sunday or Monday? Alan's frying a turkey. He wants me to roast one and bake it. So either Sunday or Monday I'll be good to thaw the turkey, start thawing the turkey. I get back Monday. So I'll go straight from the airport to buy a turkey and then stick it in the 
Take it out this Wednesday? It takes a week? I'm very confused. If I buy a frozen turkey, when does it go in the refrigerator to thaw it out? An hour per pound. That doesn't seem right. Because, I mean, I'm not going to have like a 100-pound turkey. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not running the turkey truck. So, Sunday. Shit. I'm going to be gone. Monday. Okay, so Monday. I'm going to be home. I'm going to go straight to the grocery store. I'm going to put their turkey in the refrigerator. This is not good. Okay. Mm -mm. A week? I'm going to go to Butterball.com. Thank you, Jenna. Jenny. <laughs> That's funny, Michael. They'll be sold out of turkeys? Okay, I'm going to, I got to go. Monday's good, okay. Monday should be fine, okay. Where do I get a fresh one? I don't know. I know. Okay, Haley, I'm going to chug this last sip and I'm going to go. I'm going to try to put the rest of this in the ice cube tray like somebody told me. That'll be fun to try and see if that works. Buy a cooked turkey, I know, right? All right, I gotta go. Thank y'all again for being a million listens on a sandwich and some loving. You don't know how much we appreciate it. One million all-time listens. So exciting. And um, we'll have the information posted on the contest. So hopefully... <laughs> so exciting. So hopefully um, one of you watching now will be winning to to party with us on New Year's Eve. We'll have all the information on the Instagram contest posted sometime tomorrow. Okay? Jennifer, I can't, I don't have any room in my freezer to put the turkey. That's why I have to buy it after I get back. Right? I can't freeze it and I can't leave it just thawed out. In the, can I leave it thawed out in the refrigerator from Wednesday to Wednesday? A whole week? I don't know. Ugh, I worry about this tomorrow, y'all. I gotta go. I'm now my, my head is spinning. All right, I love you all. Will Prosick, hey, I'm just signing off. Will, I gotta go. So nice, so nice to see you. Your mother was awesome, awesome lady. Snorex does work. It's a hundred bucks. The best money you'll ever spend. Thank you, Michael. All right, I gotta go. Thank you. Okay. I got it. Y'all can message me about turkey stuff. All right.